Welcome to the Thinking Tackle podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're in trouble now, so you really are. No, no, like, look, welcome to the Thinking Tackle podcast, and it's a very special one today. Um, the 100th episode, so to celebrate that, we have invited four relative unknowns to, <laughs> to celebrate with us. Danny Fairbrass, Tom Dove, Damien Clark, Neil Spooner, like the quarter top brass. Uh, thank you very much, guys, for coming in. You're very welcome. Uh, if uh, if Fox are going to send in a missile, now is the day to do it, isn't it? Eh? <laughs> this is a rare thing for us all to be in. Yeah, we're not time. even allowed to go on planes together. Did you know that? It's like it's like the president and the vice president. Like we've got. A, do you know what I mean? Can't lose us all in one go. <laughs> How are we all anyway? You two have been fishing. This is yeah. good. It's yeah. winter, so both blanking. Yeah, blanked. Dan. Uh, it's my cheat day today, so I've just been to the pub for a very boozy lunch with the Gigantica boys. So oh, nice. I'm two pints deep. I, I Expect some invites, controversy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that a royal mail. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody royal mail. What, what did you have, Dan? What was it? <clears throat> I, I had I had fish and chips. Bearing in mind, I only eat carbs one day every fourteen, so I savoured my fish and chips. I'm like that with and, salad. And I, <laughs> 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 you are actually, aren't you? <laughs> Um, and yeah, I had, I had a nice pint of Peroni, which was like an angel crying on my tongue. Um, and uh, Michael bought me the wrong beer on the second round. <laughs> of course, of course, he did. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> so I had an Asahi for my second beer. Oh, You're getting right, chauffeured though. back then tonight, Dan. Yeah. I've got to the pub. Have Rich, I've got a driver. No. Everybody knows I've got a driver, don't they? Surely. <laughs> so, do, you, do you know I've got a driver? No, I didn't know that. Now, Toby's the driver yeah, yeah. this time. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Spoons, do you savour the salad though? As much as Dan savours the oh, carbs? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that little bit of cucumber just sits the spot. <laughs> what little <laughs> bit? Said no one ever. Yeah. The first three yeah. inches or the, <laughs> the bit after that? More than that, Dan. <laughs> By the way, Dan, fish and chips in a pub, I think, is a gamble. I fish agree. and chips from a fish and chip shop generally satisfy. No, you, Sometimes you, it's so wrong. No, in a do pub. you know what? If you go to a pub, don't go off piste, don't have the quiche. Or like something that's not pub fair, don't have that because it's going to be rubbish. Standard pub fair that they do all the time is generally good. And the best fish and chips I've ever had has been in the pub. Really? Yeah, really. My local, the Trafalgar in, in Greenwich, that, I, that I'm not there, sponsored by. Have yeah. I not, but did we not intro a thinking tackle there once? We might have one. done, you actually. Did. Yeah. To, um, yeah. Yeah. No, 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 we didn't. No, that's no, that place. was... That was Another pub that I can't remember the name of, but it but it's in that area. But the Trafalgar, banging fish and chips, banging. So I don't, I won't go to a chip shop anymore. You got the same mindset with McDonald's, didn't you? You never go any any of the new fancy <laughs> ones. You never you stick with a Big Mac or well, a chicken sandwich. I think if it was a good new product, it'd be it'd in be the core. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it would, it yeah. would be on. Yeah, the, they're the repackaging menu the same filth, aren't they? Yeah, you know, it's just something different, but it's the same filth. Did you see the woman who got the lovely, that got the burger out? She kept it in a box for twenty four years, oh, and yeah, she got I've the burger this. out, yeah, and it hadn't yeah, even yeah. gone off. Tom, yeah, it's awful, mate. The <laughs> chips hadn't gone off; they looked exactly like they looked twenty four years ago. You that should is, not be putting that in your the, body. No, sorry, it's nice though, isn't it? <laughs> it's nice. Yeah, you can't argue with it. Like the old cucumber. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Once a fortnight. <laughs> Well, look, we, so this episode 100, um, we did throw some questions out to the public. I think we're going to start with those. So right. let's, let's get Toby in and let's, let's, let's answer some questions, Toby. Brunettes, <laughs> first of all. Dan um, has definitely been sirloin. to Sirloin. <laughs> <laughs> Mirrors. <laughs> yeah, this isn't quick fire questions. That's another one. That's oh, right, a different okay, podcast. All right, all right. Um, okay, I've got... I can't hear you, Tobe, through oh, these. No, no, I can't no, hear him very no, well no, either. I, I, I live really, I'm on a backup mic at the moment, so it's, it's going to sound slightly yeah, different. We're on an economy drive, aren't yes, we, at yeah. the moment? Well, I sacrificed my mic for you, Dan, so that was Thanks, it. mate. Yeah, I thought it was the least I could do. Thanks, mate, yeah. So, um, yeah, so we put some questions out. So I've got some, um, first one here. Again, I've tried to include um, something that you can all answer. So I've got Shady101172 from Instagram. As a company, what would be the one thing if you had a chance to go back in time and change? That's a good one for you to answer, I think. It's got to be Dan, hasn't it, on that? Yeah, I'd say that's One thing to go back and change. Yes. Employing me in Spoon. <laughs> <laughs> it's that fucking... You I mean, think me and Damien know the one thing that we would change, but we can't say it, so... Um, 
the one the thing that we can say, I would have liked to have protected the funnel web. That's exactly where my head went. <laughs> I thought Dan's going to say protect the funnel web. Yeah, I would have liked to have done that. Um, I worked in a tackle shop when that came out. I, I, other than that, you can't have regrets, can you? You don't you don't know what you don't know, and you make the decisions you make at the time with the best intention, and you learn from the bad ones, um, and you learn from the good ones too. But there's no point being caught up in regret. I don't think. Don't, you know, we still done well, even though we didn't protect yeah, the funnel web. So that's you know. right, and lots, still a lot to be said for being the first, isn't there? We, we, we won't forget it. Everyone else. Nobody does else does it. either. No. Nobody no. else does either. Definitely not. I Boys, could, could you, yeah, go on. Yeah, I agree. I mean, the funnel web would have been an amazing thing to patent, but you know, we have made mistakes, and that's just the way that you learn, isn't it? We move forward, adapt, and overcome. And I think we're in a pretty good position now. We've got integrity. We don't copy anybody's products. Yeah, everything's good for us. Mm. Although it, you was close, weren't you? You nearly got the sack, didn't you? What's that? Where, back in the day. I did. Yeah. Did I? I was going to get rid of you, wasn't I? That was about two weeks in. And <laughs> oh, you, you wouldn't answer the bad phone. decisions. Yeah, there, was the, there, was the, there, there was the barbed hook at Gigantica situation. Oh, yeah. well, I've, I've had that on there. a few lakes. <laughs> <laughs> I got I, well, I got I weren't allowed to um, go to the socials for a year because I got caught using barbed hooks at Maze on Delap Blur yeah. as well. Was it Maze on Delap Blur? Yeah. As well as gigantic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Two strikes, you should be out. Yeah. Should, yeah, sure. Well, yeah. you get rid of me if you want. <laughs> <laughs> what am I going to do? <laughs> <laughs> Who am I going to copy? <laughs> Yeah. I've only got one friend. Yeah. <laughs> Don't get rid of him. Don't let him go. <laughs> yeah, well answered. Well answered. Um, next one. I've got Isaac G21 from Instagram. Oh, yeah. Um, what are your best rigs slash presentation and hook bait combinations for winter fishing? I thought it was quite, quite a good one for this time of year. Was that hook, hook baits and, and so rigs? He's for asked winter. for a best rig and, uh, yes, rig presentation and hook bait combination. For winter fishing, I'm not sure people change much now between the summer and the winter. No, I you, don't. Anyway. You don't. People think so, they need to, but you don't, do no, you? Don't because you, you know. Yeah, I don't think. I, I think maybe in the past people used smaller hooks and lighter lines, but they don't, mate. Every no, magazine I mean, used, used to, to write I mean, that I mean, scale down for winter. Yeah. You, how many rich? How many of those articles have you written and shot? Published, you mean? Scale <laughs> down yeah. for winter. Oh my people god! Still do them, Dan. They're yeah. still, they're still, that is still out there. It's uh, such bollocks, isn't it? Uh, well, it I really think so. is. especially now hooks are really sharp, even yeah. though they're big. Strap I a just... size four on and get it out and there. Yeah. The fish are bigger, the lakes are weedy, often snaggy. You can't scale down, can no. you? And, no, I, and get I, I everything keep it exactly in. the same. Hook baits don't really change for me because I use pineapple pop ups all the way through <laughs> the year. But I would say that bright pop ups and something that they're going to notice without loads of bait around it is a good thing to use in the winter. So you can move spots quickly and, and cast around but nothing really changes for me really no, I, little I think solid bags little spinner rigs it's like 13 all... degrees out there at the minute they're, they're mm. eating yeah we should yeah. be in here should we we should be <laughs> dangling well this is it I'm, I'm nearly off my rods out got right in the way of our fishing they have told no <laughs> <laughs> uh well for me i'll just carry on using um the spinner rig right through the year i mean i use really heavy line go completely you know like 065 for hook links um, the only thing I would change is when when it's really cold, I use maggots and casters when they're allowed. That That is, I mean, it's I know it's not something you do a lot of, Dan, but that is everywhere now. It's, I think that's more standard than, than anything. Is is If you're not, like we, we, we were recently at Manor, weren't we? And you, you decided not to use yeah. the naturals, but I think that's booking the trend these days. Yeah, you, it you, you have If they're being used, you have to use them. It's stubborn to not, and I would, I would, if I was on a lake where they were getting used, I would use them as well, but I'd use them I've better. I've never seen you cast a, a maggot out. Oh no, no. I've caught loads of fish on maggots, loads. Yeah. Hollyfields maybe? Hollyfields, yeah. mate, back yeah. in the day. <laughs> yeah, classic. caught loads. Yeah. I, I'm not saying they're not a brilliant bait to catch carp, but if you use them on their own with nothing else, they get very little nutrition and caught repeatedly. So it's, it, it's not good for the long-term future of the fishery, you know? Um, but if they're used, then you have to use them as well to compete. You do, definitely. But we've, we've proved with the, with the embryo lakes and Gigantica, if you give them what they can process in the winter, i.e. carbohydrate, you can still carry on catching them. Maybe not in the numbers that you would catch them on natural baits because there's nothing to beat a chopped worm or a cast or what. I get that. I totally get it. But as a fishery owner, you have to think bigger picture and the health of the fishery long term 
and it doesn't serve the fishery to, to allow live baits or whatever. You look at um, Sandhurst, got dominated by them, all the weights went down, they've stopped them now, all the weights have got massive. And I bet if they look at their catch reports, as many fish get caught as got caught before, they just get caught on something else, you know? Mm. Um, same thing, what was the other one that banned it? Lynch Hill, absolutely dominated by maggots, wasn't it? Christchurch, they banned them and Ziggs, just as many have been caught and they're all up in weight. So, yes, they're a brilliant bait. If you're the only person or a couple of people using them, it makes no difference to the fishery. But if everyone's using them en masse, I don't think it's great for the fishery. That's the reason why. Yeah. Not that they're not, they're not good. No, and, and you actually opened my eyes to something, Spoons. I think maybe last oh, winter. <clears throat> yeah, it was the first for everything. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just, just say that again. I'm gonna... yeah. We'll clip that bit out. Yeah, mate. cheers. Thank you. Um, the, uh, the wor you, said, you thought that worm isn't as good in winter as, as maggot. Um, obviously worms have kind of been the, the thing that's really taken the scene by storm in the last sort of five, well, like three to four years probably, isn't it? But I remember you saying not as good as, you'd go for maggot over worm in winter yeah, if you were it's using talking, naturals. It's working here and talking to the guru boys. Really? It, yeah, yeah they you know, they've used chop worm a lot more, a lot longer than carp anglers have, I would say. Yeah, absolutely. And they've, all of them, all of the boys you speak to, it can be the absolute kiss of death. They can be catching, put a bit of chopped worm in to try and boost it and just kills it stone dead. So it, I don't know what it is what about, about it. What about you, gents? Because you two have used them, haven't you? Have you used them in the winter and done I, as I, well? I, I use live bait loads. Um, I, I'm, I'm not, uh, personally, I'm not as convinced about the worm as a lot of people mm. are. I, I've used them and taken them out of my mix and absolutely battered places just using casters and maggots. You love a caster, doesn't it, to be fair? Yeah, yeah. I've, yeah I've used casters for years They're now. They're casters, Daddy, mate. Yeah, yeah, not casters. casters. Not casters. <laughs> Ca oh, Stay true to your roots, haven't you? They're swims, not pegs, yeah. yeah. Ca casters are the, casters are the best yeah. um, carp fishing bait ever, I think. Yeah, I like, completely yeah. agree. Do you know what, Matt, Matt Pettit doesn't give a lot away. He runs Embryo, but he's a Terminator, and he says there is not a carp swimming that cannot be caught on a caster. That's true. Mm. They, 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 if you he catch, speaks, it, you listen. It, 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 if you if you if you learn how to use them properly, you can literally just catch everything in the lake. You quickly. can't you can't say that and then not elaborate, because people will be like, "What do you mean? What do you mean use them properly?" Well, go out and I, use them. Learn <laughs> how to use them. Well, you, first of all, you have to get really, really good quality casters from. A match shop. A match shop in the north. Yeah. Some, someone who's, so someone Tom, who's... Tom has his casters flown in. You think, oh, I've got a driver. <laughs> Tom... getting, he's got a really caster yeah. driver yeah. from the north. Yeah. Yeah, a yeah. Tom, of is, from... Tom is the Pablo Escobar <laughs> of the casters market. Um, yeah, the, 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 the shops that care about the, the shops that, that supply to match anglers, really, because the match anglers know. So it's not the pre packed frozen rubbish, is no. it? No. Freshly turned, right? Freshly turned, fresh, yeah. freshly turned casters are the, yeah. are the, the, the gold. Um, it's just down the back of my vet in this yeah. life. <laughs> <laughs> you get them massive big flies in there. Massive blue bottles nutting you. Um, <laughs> so and annoying. You, you've, you've got to look after them really well when you're on the lake as well. Cut them into separate bags. Don't give them any light. Don't give them any heat to make sure they're at the, at the, the right sort of turning stage. Um, and then you've got, to, you've got to be really, really, really accurate with your spod because I, I think they love them so much. They eat everything in that area and it's done. And, and so you can draw them away from your hook you bait if you get it wrong. You can draw them away from your hook bait. But if you, can, if you can fish anywhere up to like 100 yards and fish like, like, like as accurate as a sniper with your spawn, then and you can put three or four spawns right on it, if you're fishing in six, seven, eight foot of water in even through July and August, you, you're going to catch everything that swims past it. Like, I genuinely believe that as well. It always blows my mind. And, and actually, given as we, we are going to reflect on some podcasts, the Matt Pettit one that we did, and he talked about carp being stopped in their tracks by casters way above the bottom and dropping. Blows my mind every time because they look to me like quite a scentless sort of inert inert, little yeah. object. Mm. That, that I, I, do, yeah. I don't know what they... I think they like them as much as they do maggots, but maggots... They're not even visual, crawl away though. a lot of the time, especially if there's any sort of temperature in the water, they're gone quicker than you think they are. Mm. Um, whereas casters just sitting on the top, perfect for them to come and eat them. Um, but I, I think the same about tigers as well. I think they're great at certain times of year. Um, but yeah. I've, it's just a bit, a bit like the old gym girl in the baggy tracksuit, isn't it? You know what's underneath. <laughs> so you bomb, you're straight on it, aren't you? you know? <laughs> Similar. <laughs> it's, a good, it's a good metaphor, Dan. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Um, but and, and to be fair though, Dubby, you do like, um, you just said about sticking with your same rig, you do like the old small pineapples over the top of the casters even. I've seen you do that. Yeah. You're not yeah, necessarily fishing casters. Do you not casters. use a caster hook bait? 
I, I use a caster hook, but if I'm fishing anything up to like 40 or 50 yards, a, a, a little hooked on bag is really important as well. And if you've got hooks of on casters. bag of casters, you can fish a caster hook bait. Either fish which, it just, which is what? Which is, uh, you can either fish it mega. Like the first time I've used them was over Golden Gates and I was using a hook link about four or five inches long, a long shank, a red kicker over the eye of the hook, nothing on the rest of the hook and just one fake caster on the, on the bend of the hook. Um, and then hooking a bag of casters on. But I was fishing like 40 yards and spawning right on top of them and I was getting bites in my hands. You know, like that was taking the whole bag out of my hand. Changing the embryo rules over what doing. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, that, that, that was a, an accuracy thing again. And uh, sorry, going back to hook baits. And then if I can use a, a bag, even maybe further out, or I don't know what the bottom's like, then I'll use a spinner rig, but with, um, a little bit of black foam and then two casters on top of the black foam. What, on, on the fake back of the ones hook. or real ones? Fake, fake casters, yeah. Right, okay. Um, wow. But but if you're allowed to use maggots as well, which you, you normally are, um, if you can use casters, you can just use like, I use like 11, 11 maggots as a hook bait mm. and just fish the casters. I was going to tell you, I, I had but all three rods at 11 wraps this week yeah. and I looked at my watch and it was 11, 11. Did you catch? It's no, always 11, 11. <laughs> How did you not catch? As, as soon as you start know. clocking onto the 11, 11 thing, all I can ever see is 11, 11. Yeah. What, what's that about? It makes, only makes a difference to Tom, basically. Mm. If you're not Tom Doves, it's you're not in the thing, game. It's a real thing. What? It, yeah, well, it must be because I always look at my phone. I don't have a watch, and it's eleven eleven. Yeah, strange that, isn't it? Hmm. Maybe your watch is broke. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that minute is yeah. somehow stretched across a lifetime. Yeah, it could be. Um, Dan, the one thing I would ask actually, don't seem to. I haven't seen it as much this year, but there was that certainly in your little orbit. I would suggest that real predominance of the pineapple ice tonic yellow pop-up spinner rigs like mm. that was that was a big thing yeah it still Maybe is last winter or the still winter is before. this winter right hasn't changed no let's all of us are using rigs that work in almost an identical way to what we were using 25 years ago don't they the mechanics of the rig, the materials are different but the way the hook turns and everything else it nothing has really changed in all of that time other than the materials that we use to create the hook turns over and catches hold doesn't it I wonder if it that spinner's did. had a bigger effect than any other rig before it, Dan. That what? The spinner. Had a bigger impact on the wider carp Yeah, because community. it's so easy to use. Not because of what it does. It's simplicity. Do you People not... want simplicity and as little work as possible to create that thing. And that's what a spinner rig does. Like the choddy used to. I just feel like it's a huge leveller as well. It's everyone yeah, now it's has, not, a, has a minimum it's bar it's now. Not, it's, not a, it's not a leveller. You can still chuck it in the wrong place. I'm not saying you're going to catch as many, Dan. And, yeah, it's I'm not a leveler, mate. It's not to, a leveler. Okay, it's, it's brought it's brought the floor up. I would say it's, it, it's, it's yeah, it's it's made it easier for the layman to fish something effectively more often than not. Yeah. I would say it's done that, but as a leveler, definitely not. The leveler, there is no leveler. No, no. The level of experience and commitment that these guys put into it is is not. I think, it, I think you can't what, do that without no. without matching. Level that. is the wrong word, but certainly it's brought the floor up for me. There's a lot of people now. They, the, the amount you see being thro chucked out there, Dan, yeah, uh, and they're it, all this relatively effective. It's ninety percent of people, isn't it now? With, in know? which case, it is without doubt the most impactful rig we've, that's ever been invented. Maybe the chod. I thought. I think the chod. Well, chod, yeah, the chod once, had its day. That was of, that yeah. was used by just as many people. Chod had its day. I'm sure. Um, do you think? Do you, you feel know. like it lasted as long though? No, like the the chod, it had its period. Yeah, because because it's that far off the bottom, they're getting they're, they're spooking off it, aren't they? Because they just know every time they suck in one of them things, they're in trouble. That's why when chods lo lost their effectiveness, you got loads of hook pulls, didn't you? At, at the end of yeah. the chod's life, you got loads of hook pulls. They knew there was something wrong with it, but they wanted to eat it anyway, and then it moved on to something else, and then it all changed again. Have the you ever got tricked again? Have you ever put a chod out, Damon? I don't see you as a chod angler at all. Mm couple of times right just, just don't because i don't, haven't used it i haven't got that much confidence in it yeah um <clears throat> but i'd say you know that that spinner rig is it doesn't tangle i use it with a helicopter all the time never tangles if it gets picked up it resets um i just think you know a lot of people you know they do set it up okay but you can fine tune it to a level where you know kind of what we're doing now is miles ahead of what we were doing could, two could years you, ago. Could you like drill down into the fundamentals of that? Just maybe three things that you that you should do with your spinner without giving too much away. <laughs> I think you can you can easily have use all the, the best tickets in the country. <laughs> number one. 
<laughs> I, I think I think it's really critical that the with the spinner, I would say the biggest thing is when you when you pick the rig up, when you pick the boilie up, the hook has got to go around every single time. You see the stops, you know, the uh the swivel the the, sh the, the stop on the hook shank in the wrong position. So I have mine just on the bend on a, on a wafter so that in any way that carp picks that hook up, that hook is always down, mm -hmm. you know? And if it's, if it's on a side or whatever, that's just not, it's losing its effectiveness. And I, not this year so much, but the previous three years, you know, I've caught a ridiculous amount of big carp on that and no hook pulls, nothing. And it's just, but you know, you're only going to find that out by doing it yourself. And it's but it's the fine tuning and um, and going back to the bait. The bait is so critical. You know, over the rig, if they're not going to pick it up or they're not interested in it, you know, you're wasting your time. So it's like Tom says, you've got it's, it's, you've got to make the right decision. And at the moment, for me, maggots and casters in this weather with a spinner is is you know. A, a I, really don't, I don't get why you're not fishing a bottom bait amongst those maggots and casters because them fish are preoccupied not, on tiny little things on the bottom. I'm not talking you're about not what, no, I'm not it. fishing a pop-up above it. No, I'm not fishing. You're not fishing a pop-up? No. Right, you didn't say that. No, I said I'm fishing a wafter. A wafter, I think so. A wafter. Yeah. A wafter. But I'm fishing, what I do with my maggots, I fish a, about 10 mil or 8 mil of 8 mil red foam and I put 11 or 12 maggots, sometimes up to 21 maggots or 22 maggots. Put one a bit of- Do you um, actually count them then? Yeah. yeah. I do. I count. Do you not count? Do you not count how many boilers? I don't you know, count how many maggots I put on. No. Oh, yeah. I put eleven on each side of the bait. So right. when you tie them down, they sit perfectly at the top. It's I lovely. Think, I think the less you put on, the better. Yeah, I don't disagree. I don't disagree. I, I would say, from the underwater experience and what I saw on the certainly on the Guru. Well, what about the likes of Oscar? Then, you know, he uses a fucking great ball. Yeah, but but mate, he fishes in that that sort of uh, what's it called? That country park, right? What's it called? Um, More than one of the the New Forest Water Park. New Forest Water Park, yeah, 1830s and in about six acres. I, I, I isn't think it? let's, let's no, not put down his no, 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 mate, Oscar. I, I'm yeah. joking. Oscar <laughs> is the bollocks. He's an amazing angler, but I still think that you would catch more on maggots if you had less on. And okay. seeing, seeing the underwater filming that the Guru Boys did last year that I was privy to, even putting three maggots on their hook, they're catching big bream. And even even um, uh, Ringer was was surprised that when they went down to one maggot on the same size hook, they got more takes because all the others lay on the bottom as one maggot, don't they? There's only one big bunch. Mm. Mm. Have you seen the fox underwater fill? Not seen it. No. No. Um, fox underwater film had a great big thing of worms on over the top of it all, and they had a load of chopped worm out there, and then this huge bunch of whole worms. You needed two little bits of chopped worm because that's what they were eating, you know. Mm. You've got to match the size of your hook bait to the size of what you're feeding, and I think if you have less on, you'd get more bites. I, I agree in general. I think there there are the odd exception when you've got them going when you've got them really going mad, the bigger the hook bait just gets picked out. But I think when they're right. literally fighting for them, like when was it Creek? We're going to have to do an underwater live bait I'd special. Love, I'd love we? to do that. I'd, I'd, yeah, I'd love to. Yeah, for sure. I, yeah. I never know if you get, well, because of the, the the underwater filming, you have to have not too many carp in the swim because otherwise it will cloud up and then you don't get that feeding. It's not a hard lake, mate, but there's hardly any carp in it. Catch all the good ones. No, no, no. I mean, I mean, I mean, you, you wouldn't, you wouldn't determine that you need a, a bigger hook bait when there's lots of fish in the swim because you'd never get that feeding situation in front of the camera because the clarity wouldn't be there is what I'm saying. Right. But, if you found a gravel spot though, it would, wouldn't it? Yeah, maybe you know. if you could find. If you I could think find we should do that one year, definitely. Yeah, hundred percent. It'd be so interesting yeah. to see. Let me buy a maggot farm though before you do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Willie's worms do great. Right, we get our, our maggots yeah. from there and yeah. uh, our worms from there as well. I just, I just get the, the casters of things that I'm really protective about the quality of them. Mm. My middle name is William. What about William's worms? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's fine. <laughs> that work. <laughs> Bada bing, bada boom. Let, let's park that one, Tobes. What we got next? I was going to say, Isaac got his uh, got his money worth yeah, there, did, didn't he? Cheers, Isaac. Cheers, <laughs> Isaac. Thanks, mate. I don't even know. If, I'm not sure we, we actually answered the question. <laughs> what was the, what even was the Spin, question? Spinner rigs and solid bags. <laughs> yes, <me. laughs> yeah, sorry, it's we never uh, got around yeah, there. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Isotonic pop ups. Let's, let's move it on. One that I'm quite interested in is uh, each of you, what is your most embarrassing moment whilst fishing? That's Richard from Facebook. Oh, mine's easy. 
Got to explain that that Dovey's it was not because of Dovey. Um, I was going out filming with Jimmy Armstrong. We were going down to Walthamstow on the two and the three, and Dovey said to me, "What's the what's the swim where you've got the three behind two you?" Party two. And you said you're in tea party two. It's a hundred yards to the island. He said you've got to be so tight to the island that you're you're panicking as you cast, and you've almost not got to see your lead land. That was the word you told me. Right. About fifth cast. Good, good advice. Sir. About fifth cast got it right. <laughs> Had a weird bite. Just didn't connect with anything. Didn't have spinner rigs. At Had the to time. run and missed it, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just let <laughs> it, just spat it out. Yeah, mavic, spat it out. <laughs> Took loads of casts to get it right again. Jimmy's there filming. Eventually, I've just let one let one go. And it made this tiny splash. My lead made the tiniest splash next to the island. And Jimmy's like, put that rod down. That is the one. So it's like, put it down. Don't, <laughs> nobody move. That is it. Sat there for five hours. Like it was just getting dark. I'm like, it should have gone. I've got to redo it. I've got a couple of hours in the darkness. I've got to redo it. So I've picked my rig up. And I was in the tree <laughs> where I was using leg clips. My lead had come off of the clip. I hadn't had no idea. And I'd been fishing for squirrels all afternoon. <laughs> well, the lead coming off had the gone lead come where off had it gone needed exactly to go. where it had right, to okay. go. Right, Unbelievable. Yeah. So, yeah, for that one. Oh, I've got a good one. Well, I was, I was fishing with Regan. We were fishing this little lake, <laughs> fishing with maggots. And at the time I was using... Um, uh, I can't remember what the, what the hook's called. Captor the hook, Damien. Yeah, you remember that. <laughs> I remember. You know? oh. yeah. All right, not a lake, the lake. The lake. No, a lake that we can't talk about yeah. Yeah. or mention. But yeah. um, I was that going to... doesn't at... narrow it down in your no, case. So if we do, do you get banned from loads of places? No. no right, okay. um, so I was out in the boat and I had this little green bucket. You know, remember the little buckets which had the black lids on the round ones? Little census ones, were they? Yeah, I think so. But all the tackle shops had them, but they yeah. were really badly moulded. And I had my rig in the, in the, in the bucket... And when I pulled it out, the hook caught on the, the flashing on the inside. So I thought, right, next time when I go out, I'll leave the cap on. So I took it out, put it out there, put it spate it up, come back, had a bite. You don't get many bites on there. I'd, I'd already had one. Put it back out there, real stuff. Got it, had this ripping bite. Regan's come round. And it's come off. I had it in, left the cap on. Oh, right. You're not. Remember, I've, I remember that. Actually. Yeah, I've heard. I've heard a couple of people done that as well. Yeah. yeah. Well, that was yeah. devastating for you. You made a lot of people very happy because it's rare yeah. for you to make a mistake. <laughs> it, is. it is. Yeah, we had to have it reprogrammed after <laughs> yeah. that, didn't we? Plugged him back into the matrix again. It was fine after that. <laughs> in, in the defence of everyone else, they didn't design those little pl- no. little caps either, did they? No, no, you? no they didn't. Yeah, yeah. Tom. I think the most embarrassing thing for me is lo- keep losing to competitions to oh, Neil to go <laughs> <laughs> It's like any time we have a match, you beat well, yeah. you beat me. Yeah, I've got I've a been, lovely trophy I've, collection. Yeah. That's fantastic. He's got a trophy collection with like these big trophies all the way all through his house. I keep getting these little fucking wooden things about that big. I'm like, oh. <laughs> what was the last one? She said, okay, yeah, angler. Like, uh, okay, angler. <laughs> He's got like the bestest angler in the world ever. <laughs> 2.0. Yeah. What's the secret spoons? I'm just better than him. Okay, Deep yeah. down. Everyone knows yeah, it. Yeah, everyone knows yeah. it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not. <laughs> um, my one, the most recent one I can think of, it wasn't anything I did when I was fishing, but we, you know, we did that melanoma focus thing at the, at the Baston Lakes. <sighs> And you got all these prize winners and people that bid to, to go there. And there was one girl. I think her name was Emily. I it think was. it was. Yeah, it was Emily. Yeah. Yeah. Good. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I've just one. The, one of the guys was it? Was it Steve? Had caught one on the point. Who was the bodybuilder guy? Andy, wasn't it? Was it Andy? I'm terrible with names. So I, I apologise to the people concerned. Uh, um, but he just caught one, and I just done the pictures. <laughs> of him with this fish right and then i've got the camera and i've got the thing up to my eye looking through the viewfinder reviewing the pictures right and i've gone oh yeah like that but i was pointing the camera straight at emily when i did it and she thought i was taking a picture she thought i was taking a picture of her and i had to go no 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 i'm really sorry i wasn't, the lens I wasn't on the taking lens it at you <laughs> i'm panicking now uh oh mate honestly <laughs> That's funny. Oh, a charity do as well. Do you know what I mean? Uh, so yeah, that that is a good one, mate. That's yeah. the winner. That is the winner. That's yeah, that the, the winner by a long way. Yeah. <laughs> um, another one here. I'm quite looking forward to uh, this one as well. 
Uh, Wee Man from Facebook. If fishing didn't exist all of a sudden, what job would each of you be doing or what career path would you be on? Can I do this for everybody? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'd yeah. be a nice twist. Yeah, um, yeah. Okay. Spooner would have a market stall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll take that. Yeah. Um, Dovey would be some sort of um, health and longevity guru, like up in the mountain somewhere. Yeah. And Damien would be a hitman. <laughs> and he'd be bloody good at it as well. You would never, ever know until it was too late. The last thing you'd see is your brains coming out. <laughs> I could imagine. The, I can imagine. The, what would I be? Yeah. Superstar DJ. <laughs> one of all oh, the yeah. 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 Sure. <laughs> so I've got a weirdo in the forest, and you've got a DJ. <laughs> I can just see you, or, or maybe like a, maybe like the the like a, a cult leader, that sort a of. Cult leader. Yeah. Oh, that's, wow. better. Come, that's, that's better. Yeah. Come wow. with us, like a Waco what? sort of situation. Yeah. Yes, eleven, yeah. eleven. Uh, come on. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, let's all kill ourselves quick. <laughs> No, you lot all killed. I'm moving on to past is new. <laughs> Just leave me your bank details and your passwords. Come on. I need your bank details. <laughs> um, nobody gave Rich one. Rich. What would I be doing? Rich, Rich would probably be doing this, but getting paid more money for it. <laughs> a real journalist. Yeah, you'd be a real journalist, wouldn't you, Rich? Do you reckon? What do you think you'd be doing, Rich, if, it, if you weren't in the industry? If, if there was no fishing? Yeah. I'd, I'd really like to think... I'd love to live in a, a remote Scottish body and just write stuff that no one's ever going to see, probably. Something like that. I don't know. Right. <laughs> yeah. Is that a job? No, not really. It doesn't bring any money in, does it? Um, write something that nobody's going to see. That's... I, that, that, maybe just, yeah, write, write and stuff. I'd right. love to do that. Yeah. yeah. We're very different. Mm. What would you do, Tom? Not really. What would, would, be, your, what would be your dream <laughs> thing outside? Pro golfer? <laughs> Well, if if we're talking about what is the ultimate thing to be, yeah, yeah so, 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 something Dream big, like fo Formula One, DJ or golfer, so, something. You'd be good at all of it. Tom's good at everything. Yeah, I don't know if anybody's realised this, <laughs> but if you're around him for any period not, of time, he's not great. Man. You only got to look at his missus to know yeah. that. Tom's good at everything. Yeah. She would disagree. Annoyingly so. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think you. I, like DJ when you're like but up to 30, I suppose. But something like Formula One or golf where you're super healthy and chasing the sun. I think that's, that's the nice way to I can see you doing F1. Yeah. 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 And you, you're, good at, you're good in the go-kart as well, aren't you? Yeah, I, I kited when I was younger, so I know yeah. how to do it. But you, you have to be elite, elite there and very rich from when you're young, I think, to, to get into that sort of thing. Yeah. But they're, they're, yeah You've got the skills to do it though, bruv. Thanks, mate. I Natural appreciate Natural ability that. you have, I definitely. I appreciate that. Cheers. Yeah. It'd be nice to I sort of, I hate you, but it? I love you at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something like that would be Spoons? great, I think. Realistically, I'd still be selling cars. Yeah, I thought you would but really, I would say be. That. But I, I used to, and Dovey knows, and I think a few of you know, whilst it's not that aspirational, maybe, I used to love playing a game of darts. And if I'd have carried on playing darts when I was young, it, I'd like to see what level I could have got to. You are right. very good at darts. I, can, I, I went up and I did a slideshow recently, and it was in a dart club, and just, I hadn't thrown for six months but i beat one of the oh no sorry i in, ended up drawing with one of the better players seven or and hit a couple of 180s in a night and that's from not picking up a set nice. I mean, you see like luke littler coming on the scene now and I'm, i know you would have done it if you lot have seen yeah. 16 mm, years old yeah. yeah never seen someone so good but so young yeah i'm not i was nowhere near his level obviously but if i'd have carried on playing in that that muscle memory i'd have, I'd have got pretty good i think yeah yeah it's not as good as fishing is it, it do, mm. do you think that? Do you, do you guys think that, that you can be a naturally good angler in the same way that Luke Littler is clearly a genetically naturally no, good? I think, I think, yes, naturally, in the, but you've still got to practice and practice and yeah, practice. And, you've got to well. do it. You've got, that's, in all these films and podcasts and everything else we do, the one thing you could say and discount the rest of it is just go fishing. The more you go fishing, the more you will learn. And people want to have the level of experience and skill of all of these guys and go one day a month. It's never going to happen. It's like, I quite like cooking, right? I've got loads of cookbooks. The first time you cook the thing that Raymond Blanc or Jamie Oliver or whoever has cooked in that book, it does not look like no. it, does it? No. It looks like cars run over something the first time you do it. But if you do it three times, it starts to get closer and closer and closer. And that's, they never say that in any cookbook that this is how it should look in the end, you know? And that's what people, they want 
they want to know what the secret is, and the secret is time. Yeah. It's effort. It's yeah, continuing hard to, yeah. to, to hard work, yeah. isn't it? I think that's the hardest sell in carp fishing is the fact that the, the, the secrets are not very palatable. Like It's, no, it's hard work. In any, it's in any part yeah. of life, are they? In, if you want to be successful in any part of life, you have to put the work in. Mm. That is it. People don't want to hear that. No. But you that can, is a reality. You can definitely have a like an, a, 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 a better sort of florability than than other people, I think. Yeah. And then, you, but but hard work always beats talent or ability, doesn't it? It does. Mm. So you, yeah, you, a you, lazy and person with talent is not going to get as far as a hard working person with so so talent. No, no. It's no, always no, fascinated me though that I watch, I get to see a lot of anglers fish, and the technical performance elements of of their fishing can wildly vary, and they can all be successful. Mm. Like you know, it's because fishing's easy. You see him. <laughs> well, time, well, time, time makes yeah. up for a lot, doesn't it? Yeah. Time on the bank, you know. Which again is a is is a is a choice that isn't an easy one to make, I guess, for some people. You know, there is a, there is always a um, a consequence to those choices, aren't there? There is, but fishing's a very selfish pastime, isn't it? And a lot of anglers, myself included, are selfish. You know, and if you love your angling. Other things fall by the wayside in preference to it, don't they? Mm. You know, one thing I've just remembered, we were talking about chods earlier on. Just want to say, because it's the 100th episode, just hello to the ultimate chod slinger, Luke Stevenson. <laughs> You'll love that. <laughs> <laughs> um, go on then, Tobes, what have we got? Yeah, there's just a few more, that, but I want to get through them because some of them are, uh, obviously people spent a lot of time sending them in and they're brilliant. Um, this one's really nice, actually. As someone who's personally inspired by the story and of pardon me, of how Corda began and grew. If each of you had to pinpoint three main reasons as to why Corda turned out to be so, so successful, what would they be? <laughs> Should we let's leave Dan to last on this one? Yeah. yeah. Um, go on, Spoon. Since you've been here, what, what are the three <clears throat> things that you've seen? God, that's quite a deep question. I thought Dan was going to go first and just answer it for all of us, if I'm honest. It's a great question. That's I, 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 you, yeah, go on, you cut in I, I think one of, the, one of the biggest things that, that Dan sort of bled through the company is his ability to be able to give away some of the work and let somebody else do it. I see loads of people that are trying to grow their business and they won't relinquish any work at all. Um, and I think I think that's something really difficult for someone to do. It's the, the hardest give, thing when you've got your own part thing. Of the business. And definitely. if you if you don't do that, you your business doesn't grow. Um, but if you do do that, there'll be lots of work that's done that isn't exactly how you want to do it but the work is getting done and your business is growing. Mm. I think that's probably the, 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 the key thing that enables something to get this big this quick. What was, what was the hardest thing you ever had to give? What was a bit of the slice of, the, of your work that you found the most difficult to pass on, Dan? I think any of it at the beginning. When, you, when you it's your thing. demo with... initially, did you see the first person that you, that you sort of... Well, no, I've got... I've got um, Chris Rose was the first person I got in to effectively do something that didn't produce a lead weight. He was the first guy, and that made a huge difference. But I thought I'd just pay his salary, and, and it wouldn't make any difference to the turnover, but it just stopped me killing myself because I was doing 18 hours a day, seven days a week. What it actually did was there was suddenly almost two of me. So not only did he answer the phone and make sure the lads in the production were doing what they should be doing, because I'd, I'd go out on the road all day around the M25 with the arse of the van on the floor at the start of the day and the suspension normal at the end delivering leads and come back and Turtles got home. Do you know what I mean? At, at, at two o'clock in the afternoon or whoever else is working there, not just him, but whoever was ever, ever else was working there weren't as committed to the success because it wasn't theirs. It's totally understandable. Just having Chris there, I made sure that didn't happen, you know, so that helped the business and he, he answered the phone and was good with the customers and everything else. And that made a huge difference. And as soon as I realized that, and it took me going to a personal development course and seeing how my life wouldn't change until I got someone like that. So stepping out of your life and looking back in, um, that's when I made the decision. And when I did, I saw how much difference he made. And that's when I got Steve Spurgeon. And then it made a massive difference again, you know. So once you've seen the benefit of it, it's very easy to then make that decision. So I, I would say to small business owners, if you get to the point where you're at bursting point and you can't manage anymore, you sort of know that that extra person is going to help. If you take people on on big salaries at the very beginning and there's not the work for them, you're going to hemorrhage the money and the company might go under. But if you get to the point, you know, you know that that, that you just cannot cope, that is, the t for me, 
that's the time to take people on. I'm not a big risk taker in like, let's take on three amazing people on a hundred grand a year and see what difference they make. And oh, a year later, it's just cost us 300 grand and it hasn't made any difference. I'm not that. It's like, I'm going to die if I carry on doing this. Mm. Let's get someone to help me, mm. you know? Spoons, can we come back to you? Yeah, I think there's there's a couple of things I think have made a, a massive difference. I think one, fr from when I first started, obviously the company was a lot smaller. I've been here for, for 16, nearly 17 years now. Um, coming from a tackle shop background, everyone you say, oh, but yeah, what, what new stuff's come out from Cord? Because all you've got to do is put your name on anything and it will sell. But we got into that position because we didn't do that. When these boys, and Damo always says the product development is where the magic happens. And it was, you know, you, we're getting products that were coming out that were so well thought out. They were, there was always a gap in the market from there. They were always, they were always better than what was currently available. And, and tested to destruction, to destruction on the bank. There are exactly. loads of things that we've never brought out because they didn't work. They're things that other companies have sold that we'd rejected. Yeah. We knew it was our stuff and it was in their packet and we'd knocked it back. And the man manufacturer had then gone round cap in hand, called we were going to have this, but they haven't had it. Oh, we'll have it. I'm, I'm, I'm hook link. I know it breaks. I know it breaks and it's in their packet. You know, that's that's what happens, mate. That's what happens. Yeah, so you when, when you've got that, as a salesman, when you can send your sales team out knowing that the product is not only tested to destruction, you know it's going to do the job, it makes that side of it very easy. You were never going in with a hard sell and, and you know, begging people to take it. You were saying, look, this works. We've tested it. It's going to let no one down and it, it's just going to carry on doing what it does in the marketplace. And that's exactly what's happened. Mm. And I think the second thing, away from that... Um, goes back to Dan it was it was always the fact that you didn't always see Dan those when when I first started again Dan was doing lots and lots of the filming he was taking on a lot of the projects so whenever I saw Dan I'd always think I'd be talking about sales figures how they're looking he'd be drilling me for information but it was never the case whether it was me whether it was someone in dispatch or whether it was one of the guys in product development Dan still got his buzz from who'd caught what What's been out? How did you catch it? And that's still the same now. You often bump into Dan, and whether I'm speaking to him or not, it might be to someone in the, you know, someone out in the warehouse. Um, Dan's talking about their fishing. Might be someone in in the sales department, and that passion for that end result is still there now. And I think that's that's in, it's integral to Corda. It's part of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very cute. Demo, anything that stands out from you? You've, you know, you've been here a long, long time yeah. now. So I, I think. Uh, the culture of the company is, you know, key to its success. There's there's no hierarchy. Obviously, everybody knows who's in charge. You know, you have your line manager, you the directors and that, but there's no one going around shouting and hollering at anybody. You know, it's a very laid back, but everybody gets the job done kind of attitude. But I think one of the single, one of the best things for me, you know, as a leader um, is seeing talent in people. And if you can get somebody who's passionate about the job they're doing, who would do it for free, then you're always going to get a good job out of them. Mm. And, and, you know, and qualifications of that doesn't mean anything to us. It's whether you're up for doing the job. You know, you might get the opportunity. Spooner might say, this guy's good. You get a foot in the door, but you've got to make it your own. But, you know, I think we've got so many talented people here and people who have gone way above what is expected of them because they want to do something. They want to push on and get something else out of the job. You know, and we've got lots of people like that and they and they love working here. And if you get somebody who loves working in the environment, they're always gonna go, do, do the best for you. And I think that's really key. Have you found, Damo, that, that the fishing, that being, being that they're often passionate anglers to start with, can go one of two ways? Like they'll, they, they'll either be unable to sort of um, separate off the fact that they wanna be fishing all the time and perhaps concentrate on professional life or, or that they use it as motivation to, to have um, a job within fishing. We, we've had a few people who have who've started who, who are you know full on carp anglers, hasn't worked out. Um, but pretty much, I'd say eighty percent of the company go fishing, go carp fishing, um, and we've got a commonality between us. So you can have a conversation with anybody in the company about fishing, and we're all the same, you know. And I think that's really important. Mm. You know, we've got a very low turnover of staff, and the amount of people over ten years is probably I don't know, out of 120 people, 30, 40 people. You know, it's it's really rare. I mean, we're the most non-corporate environment you could ever get. And when we're together, 
you know, it might it's completely, you know, not politically inappropriate. Correct, inappropriate. 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 The word. <laughs> but, but that goes back to the old days. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, we were working out of sheds, weren't yeah, we? we were. like, a very I mean, small team. The company's changed a lot, you know, but all for the better. You know, it's um, I said, not that I would, but I would do my job for free. You know, I love it, and I think these boys would as well. Mm. I you know. fucking wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't that cheap. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do. I absolutely love this company. I do. It's a figure of speech, Thomas. It's yeah, a figure no, of speech. It's yeah. a joke. We bleed yeah. green. We all yeah. do. Yeah. <laughs> right, Tobes. All good. Um, yeah, no worries. Let's do. I'll tell you what, let's do one more, and I'm hoping this will be quite a good debate. This one. Um, sorry, that last question that was from Owen Angler on Instagram. I thought it was a good question, so it deserves a, a shout out. Um, this next one is from Rogan's fishing page and Carpy Blake. They asked the same question: What are your views on technology and fishing nowadays with drones and bait boats, etc.? It's a fucking joke. Don't hold back. Say what you really think, <laughs> Simon, all right? Uh, honestly, watching people with a screen in front of the, by their rods, fucking sending a bait boat out and looking at a drone, that is not fishing for me. You know, technology where, you know, if you can't cast or you're disabled, use a bait boat. Do you know what I mean? Right, but, what about, come on, because I, I do a bit of this sort of fishing. What about in Europe? And the European guys that have grown up with it as part of their culture. Yeah, if, they, that's, all, if that's how it is out there, that's fine. It, that, it really you is know, how it is. I've got no out problem there. going out in a boat and doing the work. Because it's, it's effort. It's effort. But it is but a different st- culture over there, yeah, is it not? not it, it is a different culture. It, it, you know? Yeah, that whole. No, mate, like that. What, what about this? Um, you, you're quite you're quite techy, and, and you, I know that the the sonar stuff you've been on for a long time. But what about these bait boats where you can practically see which fish it is now because of the side scan technology yeah, and kind of thing? Tr- I mean, I've got a side scanner on my boat that yeah. I go out in a lake with, which, you know, some of the some of the picture fish are horrific. You need that. Um, but not, there's, that's, you've got to go out in the boat in all weathers. That's effort. Standing on the and bank. And a skill, yeah. keeping the boat Pre-programming. still. Yeah, I mean, I'm good at that. Yeah. <laughs> my mates are fishing down this big lake. You're doing, you're doing master classes in it, so isn't it? <laughs> The, the, Week every treat. Disaster class. He's doing all the work, and then there are guys turning up in the dark, going out to his spot because he know they know where it is. It's all pre-programmed in the dark with three rods, in an RT five or RT six. That's just taking a piss. Mm. You know it is. Any anyone to stand up for bait boats here? Any anybody? Um, no, what, do, I, you, what, do, what? You, you, you you as the youngest guy? Are you embracing this stuff? Or I think with anything, there's a time and a place. I don't think that there everything's a complete no to me. We've obviously used the drones an awful lot because we film an awful lot and they are a massive edge and they are a huge time saver, I'd say. Especially on, on a massive lake that no, no, you're no, only no. going to go to once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, 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 cl- yeah. I'll, I'll clarify <laughs> what I mean. Um, on Yeah, on lakes where it's like 1,200 acres, somewhere like Cassian or Orient or somewhere like that, where you could be spending two weeks looking for them when really you can spend, you know, a couple of hours looking for them and, and, and nudging the odds in your favor a little bit and fi- not, not nudging the odds, but you're going to find them with them at a certain time of year. Um, I think that is, a, I think that's fair game, but, but using a drone all of the time and a bait boat on a really small lake where you don't have to use one to catch them, then I think, it goes beyond what I'd be willing to do to try and catch them. I think fishing or anything in general is is good and exciting to do if it's difficult, you know, difficult enough. And and, and when when it, when it becomes easier and easier and easier because of the equipment you've got, I think the the result at the end doesn't mean as much. So there's got there's got to be a line drawn somewhere. Um, so I would never use a bait boat in the UK. I would only ever use a bait boat if I can't possibly cast that far which we have done at car says fish at like 190 or 200 meters or whatever you just can't cast it you have to use a bait boat with, with massive hook baits as well yeah you know yeah and, yeah. and, and, and i've and i've used the drone on them on, on them big lakes i'm i'm happy with that but oh. I, I wouldn't use it day to day no and i think in the defense of the of the, the the way you use drones for your filming um if the end product is something that is going to engage anglers and and, and really celebrate what we do mm. As a result, I can I can live with that, W. You know, yeah. that the, the, they're part of that game. Yeah. But when if you're p- private fishing, you're going on your own. It's just you. That's different. Yeah. I've got a drone. I, I've I've never used it in my own fishing. 
No. I also think just let people do what they want to do. I don't really care if anyone yeah, uses it. What about it. the situation you go to a lake and there's six drones in the air already? Yeah. I've never seen find, that, Dan, you, to be fair. You, that find, you find them, you set up somewhere, the drones go up in the air and there's two blokes either side of you within yeah. 10 minutes. Yeah. Would, that ain't would, on, is it? No, I'd go and that's fish a different cricket. lake. I'd go and mm. fish a different yeah, lake. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. If if you if you like, we won't have drones on embryo lakes. A lot of lakes abandoned, Dan. Right, we, won't, we, won't, we won't have it. I don't use a drone for fish finding in the UK because in the UK we're going to lakes that we already know. That's why we've chosen them for the filming. So, yes, it is a shortcut to getting bites, but on a lake we already know. I think, it, like Tom says, it, it devalues the capture. If, you, if you've had that much help. Going to a thousand acre plus lake in Europe that you're only fish once, where, where the drone's helpful and the water's clear enough and you can see where they are on fast track to make a great film. I, I would, didn't used to do that, but I would now do that because you can have all the morals in the world and then blank for two weeks and not have a film, which has cost 30 grand. But I think if you use it, you should say you're using it. I think that's the important. We've used the we've used the drone to locate these fish, fast tracking it because we've only got one chance on this particular lake. And as long as you're transparent about it, fine. But for the average angler, I think it's a, it'll be a real shame if the average angler on the, the average small lake, the first thing out of the the bag is the drone. And we've had it on embryo lakes. We've we, we had to ban deepers because there were two blokes walking around just casting cricket balls out in every swim until they'd found them. No concern for the bloke who's already fishing, all nice and quiet. Badoosh, 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 right next to him. That ain't cricket, mate. Mm. That's not that's it's not what you want out your own angling though. Yeah. Isn't it? Because if yep. if you if you go to a big lake, you use your experience, your watercraft or you know, you know, you just get to know what's going on and then you catch that fish that you're after, there's so much more satisfaction in doing that than sticking a drone up seeing it. Mm. Does does that mean that they um in your mind, Dovey and Dan and Spoons, they count slightly differently uh, if you if you have used this tech to catch them on filming trips? Well, again, it depends on the circumstance that you're using them in. On one of those big lakes, no. Mm. But, but if it's on my local them lake, but every time I turn up on a Monday morning or whatever, the first thing out of the bag's a drone, then that doesn't count mm. the same. You know? And it would be a horrible day if you all you heard all day was that buzzing. Look at Daryl. He uses a drone to find the fish on the big lakes in France. Within six hours of him being out in the boat fishing for them fish, there's drones in the air and then there's two boats either side of him and they've just hemmed him in. You know, that's a, that is a downside to it, isn't it? That's misuse of it. You know, they're just hanging on Daryl's coattails, you know, and if they didn't have the drones, he'd probably get left alone. If he didn't have the drone, he might not find the fish in the first place. You know, so That is the slight danger, isn't it, that we all end up sounding a bit like it's okay for us, but not for you. Exactly. No, you can't do that. You can't have a double standard, mm. you know. Um, but but it's not it's not good angling, is it, just to fish where somebody else is fishing because you know they know a bit more than you, mm. you know. you want to, We want to find it out for ourselves. But the amount of people that only go once a week, once every two weeks, whatever, I can see why they are clamoring for every extra thing that can give them an advantage in the time that they've got available. Humans choose the path of least resistance, don't they? Yep. It's part of the human condition. So it's never going to be completely stopped. But I think in our position, big company, very influential, it's good for us to you know, put our line in the sand and say what we think is acceptable and what we think is not. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's... Are we delineating between drones and bait boats? Is there a grey area between them? Would you say one is? I think so. I mean, bait boats that are used for fish finding with with echo sounders, you know, I, I, I'd, I would put in the same class as drones. You know, if you're sending your boat around and just looking for them. I, I used a boat last year, fishing at 150 yards, um, big winds and everything else. I was never going to be able to cast there. You needed massive hook baits because the lake, the lake in Holland, full of bream. And I used um, Derek Harrison, who I went with, who's another absolute legend, who we've, we've not had on yet, have we? No. Which we need to have on. Yeah. Derek is amazing. He's like, I still, a little bit of his personality came out in the sepography. Did you do that one? Yeah, yeah. When you yeah. went to Belgium? Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. thought that was great, you know, and because I've fished with Derek a lot. He's a salty old sea dog, you know, <laughs> he's proper old school. You know, and he's 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 like Damien. He's got every ticket you need to have in Holland and Belgium. You know, and he, he Derek doesn't fish for little carp, 
and I went with it. I go with him, try to go every year, and he always takes me somewhere amazing that's publicity shy. I've never published any of the pictures of the fish I've caught with him, but we had to use a bait boat. I didn't enjoy it because I I like casting and I like feeling the lead at the bottom and all that kind of stuff. And it's very hard in 20 foot of water to know when to put your finger on the spool and feel the lead hit the bottom that last bit. Because obviously if you do it too early, you're dragging your hook bait away from where all the freebies fall, you know. But I caught a couple of nice fish doing it. Um, and I, if I fished there all the time, I would have a boat. Mm. I would have a bait boat because it's not even worth being there. You're not even in the game if you haven't got one. Would you, you sanction know? a like a masterclass? I think you touched on it. Like if someone like Spoons wanted to do it, bait boat yeah, fishing. Definitely, yeah. definitely. We're not not against it. It's just it's just finding the right venue where they're, they're allowed. Not right. <laughs> it's, it's, it's all I think about a big it's cheater all... like Neil. <laughs> <laughs> That's all he does. As my daughter Neil would Spoon say, would cheater, cheater, bogey eater. <laughs> Cheers, Rick. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sorry, mate. Yeah, well, I would, I would do a masterclass with a bait boat. Right, I would, but I'd yeah. have to be good with one because I'm horrendous. It's snaking about all over the place, and you know. And actually, um, there are lads who are, who are very, 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 good very, very good. Yeah. You know, there's a, a guy from our um, Dutch team called Bart who we went out to um, Carp Lantis that Embryo's now taken on as a as a holiday venue in Northern Holland, and Bart's fished it in the winter, mate absolute terminator with it you know able to drop the the freebies you know whatever he thinks the swing back is in front of where the rig's going to land drop them first send the boat further on to where the rig's going to go and then catch it just at the right moment to feel the lead hit the bottom and it's all dropping in the same place he thinks but it all seemed pretty accurate to me that's a skill to be able to do that you know um so i think using them where they're allowed and in the right context and not ending up in somebody else's swim. That's what I used to have at Sandhurst. Get dark and all the red lights had come across, you know, and I found it by feeling the lead down and looking at the lake map and all that. They've got the echo on and they're dropping it. They were coming my side of my rigs, closer to me than my rigs were and then dropping a bait. That's why I don't like bait boats, you know. Um, so, yeah, but I do think, we, you know, having done a lot of the foreign fishing and, and fished around a lot of foreign anglers you have to acknowledge the fact that it's part of their culture they don't grow up casting um if they had to they would then the the good belgium anglers or dutch anglers or german anglers are just as good as we are just as good you know but they haven't had to become good casters because it's not required in their in their angling mm. that's it they would be good casters if they had to be i think that's uh that's a fair Selection of, of views there, Tobes. Good question. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it. We're all done with the questions. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. What about these? What what clips we got there, mate? Let's have a little yeah, think so about. So I've, I've I've dug out some clips from um, some shows between now and obviously. Well, the first. Well, and, I'm going to go for wee wee. Excuse me. The old cronies. <laughs> <'Cause> I, I, <laughs> did, I did. I did have a little think about about stuff that you know that I'd wanted to mention. I think really the only important one that I that I definitely want yeah. to talk about is the, is 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 the Chris Ball one for obvious reasons. Yeah, yeah, yeah um, of course. You know, uh, Chris, we lost Chris um, last year. And I think when he came in here, he was gravely ill. And and, and you wouldn't tell from the podcast. Definitely not, no. Um, Did you know he was ill? When he came no. Mm. No. You knew the week after, I remember you saying to me. He looked like he'd lost a little bit of weight. And subsequently, some people have spoken to me about it. And uh, I th he was keeping it very quiet, I think. Um, but yeah, massive loss to carp fishing. Um, there won't be anybody to replace him, that's for certain. No, no. The, the, the historian. I think there's only, just... you know, there's only him and, and Kev Clifford who who, uh, who who have that depth and uh, that I'm aware of anyway, yeah. that have that depth of knowledge. And that will that will be lost, which mm. is a great show. But for their books, you know, it's really yeah. important if, if people are interested they, that, that their sort of work lives on in a way, isn't it? It's a shame. I don't think, I think at the moment, it's only the old boys, isn't it? The old guard, if you like, are really interested in the, the history of carp fishing. But is that a thing, though, Damo? Like, as you get older, you do look back. What will people look back about this era, I wonder? I guess so. I don't but know. I suppose they'll be watching YouTube still. Yeah, exactly. so, you yeah. know, so it was all yeah. physically there, yeah. isn't it? When, yeah. when you're like 65, you'll still be watching you at 28 <laughs> on YouTube. Imagine you? your oh, that's what everyone does. <laughs> I've had a transplant by then. <laughs> it's <laughs> got <laughs> massive. <laughs> um, what was you saying? I Sorry. don't know. Something, something about 
Yeah, we'll, we'll be looking when you're 65. People yeah. do that now, though. They, they look at you and go, oh, you're not look old. I was just watching you the other day. So, yeah, he's probably watching me when I was 16. Like, yeah. Yeah, massive. Yeah, but, I remember when I started, your hair was massive. Yeah. It was ridiculous. It's just, just shiny now. It's just, yeah. <laughs> Rest in peace, hair. No, but that's the thing. Like, History's going to be with us very tangibly now because yeah. you've got it all on YouTube. Yeah. Like, potentially. I know there's lots that doesn't make it that far, but. There's um, a lot that does, though. You're right. Yeah, yeah, a lot. I mean, yeah. if it's even if it's vlogging, you know, like everyone, all these little anglers are curating their own little yeah. histories. And the, yeah. the thing that's lost from from now, from now is is the, the standard of photography and like in print and slide, the images are just they're so much better, aren't they? Mm. Back in the day, you know, the colours, the greens. A lot of lads use phones as well, Damo. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't it. know if you don't boys, any of you boys, ever do it. You, in fact, we've had this conversation, haven't we? <laughs> What are we talking about? Photography? Yes. You, um, <laughs> how many ISOs, Tom? 16 ISOs. <laughs> <laughs> just, real, like, we, yeah. we've, we've had the conversation before, haven't we? I'm, I'm not interested in, in, in photography at all. So I've just never, I've tried to buy a camera and I never get it out of the bag. And it, if, if I catch anything that's particular, like that I re really love a picture of, I'll get someone down to the, you dri dribbling. I'm oh, sorry, mate. It's, no, it's just he's he's starting to dribble not... now. I have, yeah. Um, in, in more than one place. <laughs> <laughs> What I thought. <laughs> um, yeah, so I've, I've just I've never really been into it. And I'll, I'll, I'll happily take pictures on my phone just to show the lads that I've caught one or whatever. So I'm not lying. And they're great now as well, aren't they? I'm not they're saying they're I'm not doing. They're, no, good. Phones, not. they're fantastic. They're, they're not. They're not they're anything done, like as good as a camera. But if he's not going to get his camera out the bag, it's better that he's now got a good iPhone <clears> than nothing. <throat> yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll wait until the next appraisal to talk about that. I think. <laughs> um, I, I, I would just never ever care. I'll, I'll never be into. It. I actually genuinely really wish. But I you're was really into it. good at taking photos, though. Uh, you really are yeah. framing and everything. If I set it up for you yeah. and it don't leave you to do the ISOs yeah. and all that, yeah, yeah business, it's then you I, are. I think it's really somebody's got to be really like not all there to not be able to frame a picture. <laughs> yeah, do, you know, do you not know what I'm There's a lot of not all there people then. No, I, I tell well, you, but a I lot. Don't, I don't, I don't understand think how you can possibly not look <laughs> through it and go, yeah, that's that that's looks nice. Click. You know that that's that's got to be the easiest thing to do ever. It's the same mm. as shooting something. All you got to do is just get the crosshairs onto the thing and then press the trigger. It's not that. It's Mate, not I difficult. can't hit a barn door. You must be able to. No. Take a good shot of one though. <laughs> <laughs> take a good photo of one. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, I can probably yeah. take a picture, but not um, just not. I haven't got an interest in it. That's all. No, I mean, it's a shame. I, I wish I was lucky, but I'm not sentimental about things either. Like Damien's talking about, like the history of carp fishing, and you will and, and as you get older, it will change. This is what, this is where, it will, this is what you missed. Maybe. Was it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what did I miss? I nearly said to see you next Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, we talked. We, we met, I mentioned um, the sad passing of Chris Ball. Obviously, uh, you know who was ill when he came and did the podcast, and we we were talking about the fact that the history. You know how important you is didn't that talk now? about that in the podcast, though, did you? What's that? No, no. Him being ill. He, well, none of us knew. We were just saying. We didn't know. He um, knew, though. Maybe. Yeah, we don't know. But, right. it, you know, obviously, his... That's dignity, that is. Of course. That and is dignity. Inf and if you go back and watch that, the enthusiasm that Chris summoned yeah. up... Right. That's dignity. Twice. Take it from me. Um, yeah. No, absolutely. That's the mark of a man, that is. Yeah. To come in here and say... Oh, but Mate, million percent. The like of him, we, we won't see again. And also, that the, the people who are interested in history, Damien was suggesting that perhaps... You know, it's the preserve of the older boys now who are really interested in that stuff, and and we we then sort of talking about what is history now, what what kind of stuff are, are people going to look back on from today, and it's actually probably going to be YouTube. You know, the fact that we are capturing so much now of what's going on mm. um, gives people a, a way of digesting history in a completely different fashion. Yeah. We, when we're all sat in our like fireside chairs, to be cracking YouTube open and and having a look about you know back in the glory days when it was all about. Um, Pineapple and isotonic and spinners. Yeah. Instead of whatever it is by then. No, that, dropping that, with every year, every era has its, has its things that they that they reminisce about, doesn't it? Every year it does. And what, you, you, you know. don't strike me as a as a sentimental reminiscer about carp fishing, though, Dan. Forward looking, I'm, I would I'm, say. I'm getting, I am I am progressive. There's no doubt about that. As I get older, I'm valuing what went before. Do you look more. at your own photos, old stuff? Uh occasionally occasionally not perhaps as much as i should um but i, I am I, i've we're putting a job out very soon for a pa for me which is gonna one of their duties is to help me have a social media platform because i take so many photographs that never see the light of day and they're half decent they're not your standard they're not kev wyatt or oh, whatever wow. but they're reasonable <laughs> 
<laughs> or my or yours, Tom. Yeah. No, or yours. <laughs> Thank you. Keep yeah. practicing, though, Dan. <laughs> I I want to know. Um, but, that's, but, that's but, but I, you know, be called C one social, Dan. Yeah, and and I get. You're going to write get... your own stuff, though. You're not going to. Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. of course, yeah. No, million percent, million percent. <laughs> but be, it'll but... be like Elon Musk on Twitter. <laughs> and the board of directors have to fucking take that Twitter. <laughs> he's, say, he's, he's got drunk and saying yeah. something on a Friday night. He's had again. two pints of Peroni. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but not just not just um, not not just, it gives it gives me an opportunity to look back at old stuff. And I was only looking at my iPad only a couple of nights ago. Just I was about to start reading my book before bed. And then basically I started looking through my old pictures. And it, it, it's fun looking for all the mm. stuff that you've taken. I've taken some great shots of other people that I want to put. It's not just going to be about me. It's the, the bits of parts so things I'll be party to. They're the fun to. bits, mate. They are they're, the fun bits. We've I've got some great the shots. Picks. Yeah, it's the Some socials might have to be blurred and, out a little bit. Yeah. But um, I've got some great shots I, of other people. I reckon your albums are in tidy nick, Damon. I reckon we're talking catalogued here, aren't we, surely? Uh, yeah, they are. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, unlike Dan, I don't need a separate album for my for my um, bait boat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or or again, if you if you're going to go down that road, Spoonie, you'll probably need one for your hand of God, won't you? And I've never used one. Not used it yet. No. What do you catalogue them I in? Like, are they just printouts, Demo? In your no, I've got them in albums in my photo uh, books. They're, they're all digital, so right. Yeah. Um, just by Lake, really. Do they mean as much to you now they're digital as when they were prints? They were better when they were prints. Yes, but do you, do you like the, the like the physical aspect of having uh, it? No, or I think, you... I mean, uh, uh, Elliot prints them all in, in, yeah. in photo books, doesn't he? Yeah. Which is a great idea, but that would just take me for, you know, just... It just caught so many ag. of them. No, it's just the aggro <laughs> of doing it, isn't it? Up it is, yeah, what no, is it nice is. about that is you've got something physical, you know, God knows where, where's, where we're storing all this stuff yeah. in the future anyway, but you've got a physical books. That yeah, you can something Toby can inherit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's going on Straight eBay. on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, Dan. Damien, the formative years. <laughs> no, Damien, the curly years. <laughs> but, but yeah, the, Chris was the main, from, from my tenure on the, of these hundred episodes, Chris was very much. There's a few I I, draw, I pulled out a few names, but Chris was the one that I really wanted to, to mention on this because, you know, it's it's fitting. It's only fitting. We've 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 not um, we won't see his like again, and um, you know, he he will be missed. He will. Be he will missed, be missed. Yeah. 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 Um, but I know so it's so ridiculously enthusiastic. A every moment I ever met him, he was like that, wasn't he? You know. Yeah, and it's real as well, Dan. It was yeah. Yeah, none yeah. of that was for for camera. You know, he was like that whether he was with he, you. Oh, or... he absolutely was. Yeah, yeah. Um, Every time I met him, he was like that. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Tobes, I know you've clipped out a few things. Um, yeah, the, the the first one I'm going to put up, I think, is quite a, a good one for the podcast um, because, to my knowledge, correct me if I'm wrong, Dan, but I think he joined us um, after his podcast with us because he, you know, he came in. It's got to be Stokes. It's got to be Stokes. It as well, is. Yeah. yeah, it is Stokes. Fishing he, long, he, fishing Tom long. Stokes. <laughs> <laughs> That's not um, Tom. No, this isn't. <laughs> no, so this is the a clip from his podcast. This is uh, about the birthday comment. He hates you, Rich. Crowning glory. <laughs> Imagine if we could hear I, it. I like yeah. to listen when you so called good, it as well. That you weren't sure whether it's a birthday comment or yeah, not. Well, okay, right. <laughs> Deep down, I did. I was know. there, by the way, just saying. But it's. Yeah. I don't know. But, I, I tend to do it with every big enough catch. I almost need somebody else to come and say, right, yep, yeah, that is definitely it, mate. I mean, it was well spawned out as well, wasn't yeah. I? Yeah, well, spawned out at 53 pounds. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, I mean, I've got it. Yeah, when I got it in the net, I, 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 as soon as I saw those lips coming to the net, I, I knew it was it. It's in the net. Fresh faced in the shallow ground. I've got it. I'm You've nearly ruined him. Next We've I'm aged like, him. Yeah, looked at the lemon. 100 nights at Norton will do to you. That's the common. I don't even know what happened in the next 30 seconds. But obviously, a huge blur, moment for Stokes. Really are. Are, are, are you actually in the moment there? Yeah, I could like, listen to him. I remember because um, Oz has done a podcast with us, so we've we've talked about the Burfield oh, Carnival. I saw that today. He's right up there in terms of storytellers. Oh, in so good. Yeah, Mate, if he rings me, it's ten minutes. <laughs> like even if he's had three bleeps and he's not even caught one, it's <laughs> yeah. ten minutes from the from the second he arrives at the lake till when the bite happened. You get every single bit of it, blow by blow, and 
I wouldn't have it any other yeah. way. Mm. And by the way, there's another lad who'd who would work for free. He'd do what he's doing for free. Absolutely, he, did. he used to do it for free. Absolutely, <laughs> mate. Yeah, he's and a lovely human being. He is, and a great ambassador for our company. Yeah, he one, is. one of the one great of the, ambassador for fishing. Yeah, yes. You know, he really when he when he goes to Norton. You j joke about Norton when he goes to Norton. The amount of time he has for just anybody that turns up and wants to fish there, he will give them all day. You know, he just he just imparts as much knowledge as he possibly can, and he doesn't think about it commercially at all. You know, not in the slightest. It just doesn't enter his head. You know, as much as we try and get him to, <laughs> it still it still doesn't. It's just it's Love. just it's just him. It's just a love of love of carp and all things carp fishing. You're just a, a, gr a great ambassador what for a, the sport. What a you know, to excuse the pun, what a mindset as well. That, yeah, yeah, that positivity. Yeah. But you know, do you know what? He still, Tom, still has massive doubts about his um, his um, ability, his tactics, his choices. Just the same as Daryl does. Daryl's rung me in a right old mess loads of times. You know, because he puts so much pressure on himself to perform. Um, you know, and it's nice. To, Tom does the same thing. He has a massive worry up about things. You know, he can be really down in the dumps about something, you know, but give him a night of kip and he bounces back and then he's, he's bang on it. So He, he yeah. must be literally the blueprint. You know, we didn't get any questions along these lines, but you always do. It's like, how do I become a, a, a quarter angler? And Tom is the... You'd point to him Absolutely. as being one of the absolute ways that you could do it. Absolutely. Build your album. Catch the biggest, most respected yeah. ones... Be, just for the love of it, um, have have no huge opinion of yourself, um, and even if you never went to us or anybody else, you'd carry on doing it to the day you drop dead. Mm. You know, if you're trying to be a, a, a sponsored angler, then you're doing it for the wrong reasons. Mm. You know, an interesting point on, on on those lines then about catching the biggest, most respected fish. The scene has changed in, in, entirely. Almost, I wonder how much influence let's say personally you have had on the way that fishing is now done and the way that fisheries are now produced to cater for people who want to fish in that manner yeah i don't, I, I don't think it has changed that much there are still loads and loads of lakes which have got low stocks that are hard to get into whether they be clubs or syndicates that have got a smattering of really sought after big uns but they don't get the limelight. The we'll same. Talk about, still there. Maybe a list afterwards, Dan. Yeah, huh? a bit. Maybe do me a list afterwards. Just get Dan. Uh, well, all right, let's, let's talk about Anglefield, right? Yeah. Baby Black's died. Yeah, I thought the best carp in there was the lever. You know, that's the one I would have loved to have catched. Caught, sorry. Um, and now apparently the numbers fishing on there has dwindled because there's no Baby Black. Mm. So there's no ultimate prize. But. Um, is there one called the long one or the long, yeah, long fish? Yeah. The long fish. Yeah. Um, or the long that, fish. The long, <laughs> long fishing long. Um, uh, that's getting big. Yeah. You know, the, I'm sure the level will get big, bigger. Yeah. yeah you yeah. know, so it's still there. They've lost one carp. Mm. You know, so it's still there, and all their other lakes in the Reading area are, are all still there. You know, um, and I'm sure that's the case. You know, uh, that some of the northern clubs that have got. It's, I think it's Prince Albert that's got some mega lakes. Yes. Um, you know, just off the top, all those ones in the Cotswold Water Park that you can't get in for love nor money, that John Claridge goes and smashes to bits, you know. I don't even know what they're called, but they're, they're, they're out there, mate. There's loads yeah. of them out there. They don't get the limelight like they used to because the the people that are prominent on social media, ourselves included, are not giving them the limelight. Um, because we're not allowed to fish them or, or they don't want any publicity. But they're, they're all still out there. It, you know, it, Embryo or, or Gigantica or whatever, yes, they may have had a, a small effect on the angling world as a whole, but only very, very small. It's only a small number of lakes by comparison to the whole. And I think it's, it's, it's carrying on as it was, but it just it's not spoken about as much. Mm. That's what I think. Do you not think? I mean, you boys are in tickets where you can't say anything about it. You got about twenty of them, haven't you? Well, I bet there's a you load know, of big ones in there, Dan. Of course, yeah, there is. You know, yeah. like, we're not talking about twenty fish here, are we? In any of these lakes? <clears throat> some of the lakes, maybe Anglefield. Yeah. Some, some of those lakes, that are no publicity. They haven't got monsters in. They've got a good amount of carp in them, but the, the, the clubs or, or the syndicate just don't want any attention to it. Mm. You know, one of the syndicate leaders gets rung all of the time, hassled to death. 
you know, and, and you're not going to get a ticket on it just just by ringing him up and saying, "Can I have a ticket?" Yeah. You know, he, he just wants. Uh, how can you explain? You're not going to get a ticket by not ringing him up either. No, no, but you, it, 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 you, you're going to get <laughs> There's re- a dark re- art standard yeah, work. Yeah, yeah, there is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah know, it, they just want the right people because some of the lakes there's restricted access because of what else is on the venue. So, you know, it's it's one of them really. But but do you not agree that all those lakes are still out there? They haven't died off. No, they're, they're, they're just not talked about. No, exactly. Yeah, there's loads of carp, loads of big carp. Oh, lakes mate, there's there. more big carp than ever. ever. But there yeah. is. But there's also more big carp in, in venues with lots of big carp yes. than there have been, which yeah. I think is inevitable because who would stock with 20? You wouldn't. You, no, wouldn't. That's, that's the thing. Like, everyone's saying like, oh, it's not like it like it was. You need lakes with only 15 big ones in. Da, da. Well, it's stock 15, 20 pounders. No one wants to go no. and fish from them, do they? In imagine 80 if, acres. Imagine if Raysbury so number one let, was, was around today. Let, let, let's, all, let's all just wait 30 years before them fish get big enough for everyone to wax lyrical about them. That's what happened. All these all these lakes were established before most of these people were even born. you know. And it took all that time for those fish to get big. And yes, it was super duper cool. And there was this, that period of discovery, the 70s and 80s discovering all these big carp in these lakes and now every you know that a lot of old timers are saying oh it's not like it used to be and all that we can't you've discovered everywhere mm. there aren't an infinite mm. number of lakes with big ones that no. that period was that period enjoy it for what it was enjoy today for what, what it is what we have now is unbelievable almost you have to pinch yourself a bit about the the, ac- the access to big carp that we now well, you have. do rich but for the guy getting into it now that's oh, normal yeah i suppose mm-hmm. isn't yeah, it yeah. you do because you've lived through that other period mm. but you can't again you can't all, all the old timers the folk singers of carp angling want it to be like it always was and people to earn their dues and all that sort of but it, that's not the world we live in now no you know do, do you it's not, not. Think, do you not think the old boys then Carp fishing was such a small minority of people who had access to those lakes that had big, when you say big, like 20 pounders. Mm. And now everybody's got access to 20s, 30s, 40s. It's just, it's, you know, it's like when Richie first started back fishing, you know, he had seven 35 pluses. And he, you know, and we're talking about twenty pounders as a big one. Mm. I'm like, what seven thirty five pluses his, previously? That yeah, was his, his whole, that was his whole angling career. Yeah, right. And he's very proud of that, and rightly so at that period in in time. But you can go fishing and catch that in three nights or two nights. You can catch five forties in three hours. Mm. Well, you, you can. Know? But those lakes, <laughs> those lakes are avail- <laughs> those lakes are available. You know, you've got places like Grenville's. Mm. Well, Grenville's, I'd, I'd wager, has got the most big carp of any, any, of any lake in this country. That's, that's ever, ever existed. And it's yeah, accessible yeah. to anybody. If you want to pay the two grand and get yourself on the list, go down there and have a go. Mm. You know, it's it, it's mind-blowing how good it is. But, you know, you, you, you're not going to get it for free. You're not going to get it for 100 quid. You know, it's I think, a commercial undertaking. I think what we've what we what we benefit from now is the fact that we've had twenty five years of people deciding what they think a good carp fishery looks like. Uh, the, you know, probably not even that much because what was it, 15, 18 years that the Grenville's been stocked, maybe yeah. a little longer. Yeah, yeah. But the, when people were starting to develop fisheries <laughs> back then, they weren't stocking with twenty; they were putting a lot in that they hoped would get really big, and that has happened. Yeah. Whether whatever that's down to, I'm not entirely sure. But bait, bait. climate, whatever, feeding um, them bait. Yeah. That's all it's down to, mate. If you can produce 40s and 50s in Yorkshire, which was like unheard of, wasn't it, in the yes. 90s? Unheard of. There's yep. like the motorway pond biggin and a couple of others. And now there's lakes full of biggins. Yes, they're a different strain, so they grow bigger. But the amount of bait they're getting fed, you know, um, that, that is the key. That is the key to it all. You've got these crazy places like Euro Aqua. You know, that's the extreme of something. And the same with Grenville. That's the extreme, him going out, putting out hundreds of kilos of bait for them to eat free of charge because no one can cast there, you know, and keep doing it and doing it and doing it. The stock gets massive, doesn't it? Mm. You know, so it is it is artificially increasing the weights to something that wouldn't be achieved under normal circumstances, but it sets a, pre- sets a precedent for everything else, doesn't it? And where do you draw the line on, on, on sort of your fisheries down with that in mind? Is, is, is we, big we've, always we've baited our lakes. Yeah. So some of the embryo lakes we've baited with pellets in the summer, um, but we've done, it, we've done it in a way where all the members know it's being done. It's done at a castable distance so people can go onto those areas. In fact, the syndicate managers often tell the syndicate via Facebook that it's happened. 
So people can go in, in there and fish on top of that bait if they want to. Um, and we've done it in the early years when the fish needed to, to grow to be desirable. Now they are desirable. It stopped happening, you know. Um, and um, yeah, every, everyone drip, sort of drip feeds a little bit of bait in when they leave, don't they? They all think it's going to get the fish on their bait and next time they come, that area is going to be ready, you know, for another bite. So that that's happening as well as what's happening in session. Um, but, but I do, I do think, you know, that, that this, this almost false feeding, I think if you can, if you can dial that back a little bit and create bigger fish in a, in a fairly n normal environment, I wouldn't say natural because none of it's natural, but a fairly normal environment, I, I don't see that as a bad thing, having healthy big fish. If you've got to spend two grand on hemp just to be in the game, I don't consider that to be part of carp angling, you know. Mm. But that's just, you know, and that's what I'm told it's like at Euro Aqua. You've got to do it on hemp or maggots or whatever is the thing. Otherwise, it's not worth going, you know. Then, I mean, I, I've only heard that. I've never been there, but that's what I've heard. Well, these guys I, have been, you've, I, you've been I, I don't, I don't consider that to be, you know, part of carp angling. But giving the fish a great diet and them growing as big as possible without hurting other anglers, I don't see the problem in that. I, mean, I, I think largely it's a great thing. The amount of big carp we've got access to, please don't take my reticence about the disappearance of, of, of the real low stock waters as mm. being anything other than just a, a, you know, like a yearning for that. But Rich, I'd love to do that. If mm. we, if Embryo could get an 80 acre lake and we could put, say, 40 amazing lookers in that are 20 to 25 pound and forget about it for five years, fence it, forget about it. But the trouble is, you couldn't forget about it because someone had jumped the fence and nick them all. Even though it's run as a charity, non for profit, that would happen. Mm. So you've got to have anglers around it to, to police it so that it didn't happen. You know, so you can't, you just can't let it evolve like it used to it's just the, it's not the world we live in anymore you know but i would love to create a few lakes that were really like that, that if you got two bites in a year you know what's the massive one on the m4 feel lagoon what's it called feel lagoon, lagoon yes yeah. like you know because what they put 20 20 stockies in there or something and they're all 45 pound mm. you know that that would be i'd love to do that and make it available to the average guy i'd love to there aren't the lakes really and um and can anybody afford to let somewhere develop over five years and earn nothing out of it mm. probably not well i don't know i don't know how we got there from stokesy but you know <laughs> Stokesy. <laughs> yeah he'd like a ticket on field yeah. of doom wouldn't he eh? <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't be all <laughs> um but yeah that so the stokesy stokesy won great you know great and actually went on to be pivotal in his career didn't it? you guys must have seen perhaps you'd already seen something in him but so oh, we had we'd already that, we'd already before before he came on the podcast, we'd already hadn't we already offered him um, I can't remember. consultancy? I don't think we had at the podcast time. No, we hadn't, no, because no, that's right, because I I, I listened to the podcast on the way to fishing <laughs> and rang him and went, We need to have this guy as part of our company. Yeah. I love him to bits, never met him. I just loved listening to him. And I remember saying that yeah. to you like do you know him? Can you sort it out? Mm. You know, and then we went down to visit him. Actually, at a lake very close to Field Lagoon, um, and he was he was proper blown away by mm. it. Like it was me and him, and he swim offering him a deal, so he didn't have to go to work anymore. Mm. You know, and he was absolutely blown away, he was, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, he was like, which is a lovely thing. Every always you know? Christmas had come up once. Yeah, and, and, it, and he's and he's ridden that wave. Still yeah. there, still that guy, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. 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 All right. Did you hear about when we wound him up in it after his first year? No, no. Huh? So. He's, he's having his yearly review, you know, because even for sponsored anglers, if they're paid, that's that's what we do, you know, a bit of feedback and what have you. So I said, I'm going to wind him up, All right? So got him upstairs into Damien's office like that. And I got Paul Harris from sales to come in. I said, Paul's coming in as a witness, like that. <laughs> the blood like drained out of Stokes' face like that. And I said, Tom, because basically they him and, him and Daryl had been to a shoot in Spain oh, yeah. um, and Courtney. we'd spent a load of money on it and they hadn't caught anything so we didn't have a film. Stokesy had lost two <laughs> as well and there was something else had gone on, another shoot that didn't work out but he'd, at the same time he'd been amazing, you know, absolutely amazing. And I said, Tom, uh, as a result of what's happened over the last few months, I'm, it's been difficult to make a decision on this but 
like that and just really like you know Long gave time, him a yeah. bit of time to stew i said so as a result we're going to put your money up. <laughs> and he was like, <laughs> and he said, like, on the drive home, he said, I literally flew home. Do you know what I mean? I didn't yeah. even need petrol in the car. Um, but it, yeah, it was, a, it was a nice thing to be able to do to say, bloody well done. You're, you are an amazing ambassador, not just for us, but for Anglia in general. Right. Just keep being you, keep doing what you're doing. Um, you know, and we really appreciate it. And that is, you know, um, yeah, so it's a, it's a great I've thing. Seen, what a legend. Um, he is. Simon Scott, should we talk Scotty? Yes. Still our biggest podcast. Yeah, he is. Um, I actually had a different one queued. You threw me off there. Oh, well, sorry, mate. <laughs> sorry. Can I play this one? You can either go back to what you were going to do or, yeah. I'm going to play this one quickly, mainly because um, it wasn't one of our biggest view podcasts, but it's probably our most highly requested um, part two. I don't know if any of you are going to guess this one. And it's actually my personal favourite corner podcast Nick, out Nick of all hundred. No, it's not Nick Hellier. No. no. I was with you there, Spoons. Yeah. yeah oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Should we have a listen? So, but a new rule, once upon a time, if you took a guest to the Hertz Club war, I could fish the East Bank, the other one, you make fish the West. He was a guest of yours get on the lake. But then there was people running around the lake and writing about names to swim. So they changed it. So so I fished up the top, caught a 50 pounder. So when Damien comes, now it's time for me to move uh, so that we can get a swim side by side. Right. I've been getting the odd fish down the bottom of a couple of Bobby Dazzlers. So <laughs> I sat him in that <laughs> swim. I said, well, you go in this swim and I'll go in the corrugated. So I'll chuck them out and you're not allowed off your swim out, it's fairly strict. So I sneaked round. So he all sorted out. And there he is. He ain't even cast out. He's getting his bank. I said, What's up? He said, I can't get a bank stick level. I said, Fuck a fucking bank stick. He's baiting the water on point time. See, he said, Remember that? Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> Selective memory. Yeah. My old girl's got one of them. And uh, so he said, I couldn't. I couldn't. I can't hmm. fish unless everything's level. Everything's level. It's got to be right, mate, hasn't it? Yeah. That's, that's worn off on that's me a little bit. Actually, actually, oh, oh, comes no. from Everyone on our yeah. road today. Do you know what like, I thought? Yeah. Do you know what I thought, Simon? I thought, so, fuck, I'd hate to have sex with him. <laughs> By the time he's folded his socks up and combed his hair, I'd have knocked one out and gone to sleep. <laughs> 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 you were shocked. Damo's like, please let this end. He doesn't look like that, then, yeah. does he? No. You try and do something good for the community yeah. and involve old people, <laughs> didn't you? Do you know what I mean? And that's how what happens. Oh, vegan, what a legend. I'm not sure that I'm, I'd be ready for that, mate. I've never even met Pete. Never met him. Oh, Pete is an absolute yeah. legend. Yeah, you're He's not ready for that, Rich. Yeah. Yeah. You but might you like him. You still have to go through it. <laughs> yeah. Relentless. Yeah. He went, he, he went to Gigantica the first time he went to Gigantica and um, I think it was Buzz and Stevie Rock were bailiffs at the time. Buzz is a stocky fella uh, from Kent. He's walked in the clubhouse and Buzz has gone up to him and got, gone to go, hello, mate, welcome to... And as he stuck his hand out, he went, oh, you're a funny shape. <laughs> Like that. Like, that was Buzz from then on. We, we, he, he caught he, one of the stockies he caught. We nicknamed it Funny Shape because <laughs> he just he could just absolutely knock the wind yeah. out of his sails in two seconds, can't he? Mm. I, I met him yeah. down at a syndicate. I was on with Damo at the time, and he'd just bought one of the first um, tracker armos, and he'd done a couple of nights. I was fishing, and I was swimming. He rung me up. He said, oh, "Do you know how to take these bivvies down?" I said, uh, "No, we don't <laughs> don't sell them in in my tackle shop, but I'll, I'll come and have a look." So I've gone around there. He's got it folded down. It's in the banana shape. He went, Damo said, all I've got to do is just pull the poles apart and they won't move. And I've literally put hands either side of the pole, just pulled like that and they came apart. And I went, like that, Pete? Before I knew what was going on, he had both his fingers round me windpipe, squeezing. I couldn't breathe. I'm on me back. And he just went, you could have made it look fucking difficult. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sorry, Pete. <laughs> oh. Uh, Lovely yeah. man. Yeah, amazing. I mean, uh, do we have a duty to show people the you know, the Pete Regans of this world? Like, you know, it isn't going to get well, the numbers. The podcast, is it? Yeah, absolutely. Million yeah, percent. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm listening to um, the uh, uh, Sir Pete and um, Richie, Richie Mack. 
Um, so Pete Springate and Richie Mech, I'm, I'm, I'm only on the first one at the moment. Now, obviously, because I know both of them, I've spent a lot more time with Richie than I have with Pete, mm. but I love both of them to bits and they're absolute living legends. I, I, I love that because um, I was around them years ago, not fishing the same lakes, but, you know, um, our paths crossed because I was in the industry um, and I was always spellbound by anything they had to say at the time. Um, drunk or sober, that's them, not me. Um, uh, and I think we've got a duty to give those people a modern voice and record as much of what they want to talk about as possible, whether it gets viewed by 500 people or 50,000, you know, because that's there forever, isn't it? Mm. You know, that's part of their legacy, you know, and, um, you know, I, I think we should keep doing that. Not with every single one, no, obviously, no, but mm. but I think irrespective of their allegiances to companies or where they fished or whatever, I think if they're characters of the sport and pivotal in its progression, I think we should have them on. Mm. Definitely. As long as they can remember the stories. Well, to be fair, we, we <laughs> yeah. have we have Dan like, on them, them too. It's like my God. I think like, I think the only the only one who's been as bad was you, mate, on the on the old Elsto <laughs> stuff. Like, was it? Oh yeah. Oh, the syndicate members. I know, but, name, I've, but I've got Bailey ringing in my ears because <laughs> yeah, yeah. he knows every single spot, <laughs> yeah. every single fish, every, how many wraps, uh, how many wraps it was for, to everything, and too I'm many, thinking oh, I'm doing the members a disservice here. Too many carp. Here. Mate. Too, many <laughs> carp. <laughs> too many carp. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Rich, as you said, and you, you gave away the spice a little Sorry, bit. Sorry, mate. But our most viewed episode at the uh, at the hundred is yeah Simon Scott's original episode. That's across uh, MP3 and YouTube as well. How many was it? A good producer would have got the actual figure, wouldn't he? Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a good ish. producer would know that ish. off the top of his head. No, do you know he knows what, uh, approximately two hundred thousand really views and downloads? Yeah. yeah, so it's about one hundred sixty, one hundred sixty five on YouTube, and it's had about yeah thirty to thirty five thousand MP3 downloads. Wow. Yeah, well, Stokes, yeah. he's had Stokes. Stokes is, is very, very close behind yeah. within 5,000. Stokes is, is really it? Good. Yeah, yeah, Stokes. Yeah. Oh, that's really good. Simon Stokes Scott has had um, more on MP3. Uh, Stokes is very close second. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And, uh, it's a crazy amount of people. Yeah. yeah. Followed I went by to the O2 da- over Christmas and you look out around the O2 and it's 20,000 people yeah. in it. And I was sort of like relating it to how many people watch our videos. I was thinking, bloody hell. It's a lot of people. That, like it, we even yeah. get a video now. And we think if it does like sixty or seventy thousand, we think that's not that many people. But actually, it really that's is. That's an awful lot of yeah, single people watching our well, videos. Is, well, yeah. one figure I do know: MP3 alone, we're about one point eight million downloads. Really? That's, that's just your Spotify, Amazon. Wow, all that's that impressive, well. isn't it? Yeah. Well yeah. done, lads. So very, um, very good. But no yeah. credit to Simon Scott. So I thought it'd be. Uh, I thought. We absolutely had to get. That's the, nearly as many as like Kim Kardashian's boob falling yeah. out. Oh, oh like mate, not quite. <laughs> not quite. So well, <laughs> aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> but this again, people will remember. Brilliant, brilliant clip. So definitely has to, uh, has to play. And this this huge tail came out on the surface at one point during the fight, and it just thrashed across the surface. Now Jim stood behind me and went, "Don't tell me. Just, just, just keep the boat solid. Don't tell me what it is. Just keep the boat solid. Keep the boat solid, Jim. Don't want to know. Let's just play the fish." And that moment, that whole shopping list of monsters in that lake runs through your head because you're thinking, Malins, tail's the wrong colour. Are you thinking about Dave Lane's book? <laughs> tail's the wrong colour, wrong shaped tail. Cluster, wrong, wrong colour on the back of the fish. It's not cluster, it's not the right, not the right colour of the fish. The fish is the wrong colour. The pug, no, it's definitely not the pug, it's the wrong colour. It's, it's definitely not Jacko's common. It's not a common. It's definitely, definitely, definitely a mirror. And you go down that list and you say, think, M, A, R, oh no, it's Mary. Please don't come on. Please don't come on. And this fish at that point, it just, it was like having a dog on a lead. It just powered off beneath the boat. And I remember thinking, oh no. And my rod's bent over again, and it absolutely weeded me up solid again. And I'm thinking, no, please don't come off. And anyway, fight goes on. It went on. It just seemed to go on forever. And eventually, <laughs> this huge ball of weed come up, and Jim Trot leapt over me, scooped it up in the net, and I just collapsed in the back of the boat. As you can tell from my voice now, the emotion <laughs> at that moment was just completely off the scale of my fishing. And I sat back in the back of the boat, and I went, is it Mary? He went, Caught it's bloody Mary. <laughs> Why the fish would fly like that for Christ's sake, man? It's Mary every day of the week. What do you think it was? I'm like, Stocky Common, get out of here. And we paddle back. And anyway, classic. Yeah. Mega. Oh. 
It's so good. I wish I could tell a story like that. Not is many it, people can. No, no. There's very few. Yeah, really can Yeah, in fishing, there's very few. Um, I, I, I saw, I was with um, Nick Kelly yesterday and passed on um, your regards, Dan. Another, un, you know, actually when you, when you come away and try to take things for granted, I try to, I, I remember ringing Dave who I was with yesterday and said, you do know that like hardly anyone can do that, what no. he just did, like 38 minutes of pure like passion and Lot, but beautifully worded. Like I was going to say, fantasy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, Love but you, Nick. A, by the way, it Love a, you. It was a great. Uh, it was a great tale. Uh, uh, and um, Scott is in the same. You know, he yeah. Is, yeah, Scott definitely. is in the same boat. Yeah. Some people, oh, what was you, Nick talking about? The golf course Italian, the big, the big grey Con Valley Italian that he fished for and caught in twenty ten. Right. Mm. Legally or yeah, oh, what he was a member. <laughs> yeah, he was a member. Yeah, yeah. that makes a change, doesn't it? Ch- he's changed. <laughs> <laughs> Had some great times. His podcast was great, great times. What are we Kelly talking is. like? Maybe five people that can do that. Yeah, I don't even know who they are, but Simon's one of them. Yeah, I wish he used to do his Raysbury slideshow, didn't he? He used to take that round, take that on tour, and and, the, and I'm, I really hope he does a Burfield one. He's uh, going to, isn't he? Well, Simon, he says he is, but but no, oh, he I will. don't even think he's he starting. Will. Like. He will. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Daryl's another one. Daryl can tell a really yes. good story. Yeah, he when can. he's completely engaged, he's like, the, yeah, you pissed. engage with him. Huh? <laughs> when he's completely pissed. Yeah. No, no I, I think that the, the last podcast he'd done about Orient, wasn't it? Mm. Yeah. I actually haven't listened to it all yet, but no, I e- everyone either. keeps going, have you listened to that? Yeah, I had a lot of good yeah. feedback. Because, yeah. because I was speaking to him when he was there yeah. and when he got back and yeah, he showed me all the pictures, yeah. it's a, it's a it's different, like, yeah. do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But but yeah, he's great. He's great. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. The best. That, that's the best podcast of the year for me, Daryl's. Mm. Yeah, what, that one? Yeah, really truthful. Yeah, yeah that is you special. Know. Yeah, no, yeah. I need to listen to that. He's, I'm back he, into him again, Rich. I'm I'm doing long journeys to, say, just around the corner from you. Yes. And if, I'm back into him again. I was, you've got a little way to go if you're Richie, if you're at Richie and Zapete. Uh, Do you know what I find on the on the podcast app? It doesn't list them out one to a hundred. They're all jumbled up all over the place. Direct any technical inquiries to Toby Clark. <laughs> okay, all right. Now show me yeah, afterwards, I'm, Toby. Yeah, Press I'm some well. buttons for me. Um, but we love yeah. Scotty. We love Scotty. I mean, obviously, he's been a big part of the big part of the uh, quarter family over the years, yeah. isn't he? Mm. Absolutely. Did you say he has sent us a little um, a little voice me- oh. vo- video as well? Because uh, he was going to join us this afternoon, but he's um, he's busy fish farming. So, uh, did you say this afternoon? Did you go a little bit northern then? It's, uh, it's, it's too much. Ca- it's, yeah. yeah, it's too much time with Matt on the other podcast. Afternoon. Been given the news that apparently, according to the gentleman at Quarter Towers, my podcast is the most downloaded, most viewed, and listened to. So, thank you so so much to everybody that's watched it. Uh, and based on the feedback I've received since I filmed it way back. Um, it's gone down really well. People have loved it. I taught for 20 years, so it means a lot to me personally to pass information on to other people. Uh, and I'm delighted that so many people have engaged with my podcast, found it interesting and informative. Um, not done a lot of fishing recently. I've been very, very busy with the fish farm in the last few months, harvesting um, and shunting carp around. But as the weather's starting to warm up now, fingers crossed, in the next few weeks, I shall dust off the rods, grab a packet of Kamakura wide gates, and head off and hopefully catch them. <laughs> I hope that's the old, ca- the old camera pans round, and the woman goes, Come on, Simon, time to get back on the bus. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and they're taking back to the old people's home. That, yeah. <laughs> what what found that chair, by the way. I know. Yeah, that, chair. <laughs> that thing. I know. Is it, was it metal? It was a garden it chair. It was a metal garden chair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like no expense spared. Yeah. yeah, a VS Fisheries. Found that at the bottom of a lake. Ink. Keep Ink. that. Yeah. <laughs> T- Tobes, we were going to keep this one short, weren't we? What, what have we got left? Uh, you know, what have we got in us? Well, well we've got... Well, cucumber, if you're talking <laughs> spoon, spoons. Yeah, I need to go to the toilet soon. <laughs> well, well, let's get rid of it. Yeah. <laughs> I've got one or two more clips. Go on, mate. Um, if you'd like them. Yeah, Absolutely. Let, let's throw up. Um, let's throw up. Dar- I've got a clip from Daryl's, which is actually our top. Yeah, he does make the top three. Listened out of uh, out the top hundred. And this is from the very first one. So let's uh, let's throw this one up. And um, he was on another guy, Roy Van Steels, who it was his first day at Corder. So they were going to shoot uh, like a live oh, feature. Um, <laughs> they were going, yeah, going to shoot a live feature down um, just on a, on a canal. Hopefully, he Why is it out of scene? Or something. I was like, um, 
Kevin, I'm uh, yeah, I'm in Holland, bro. mate. Yeah, are you? What are you doing in Holland, Daryl? <laughs> I Kevin said, uh, do you know um, <laughs> Do you know the Black Mirror? Oh, yes, I know, I know the Black Mirror. <laughs> I can tell you. I can I can find some information for you if it's that what you want. I said, um, actually, mate, um, I need someone to come and photo this fish. And he was like, "You're joking." I was like, "No." He said, "That's the biggest carp in Holland." I said, "Yeah, I know." <laughs> I said, no, "I'll come." And um, yeah, he was. 33.6 kilos, um, 74 pounds. Um, that was a beast. Yeah. When we got a picture of that, Toby. You know, when you catch it, you know, you have to have a little wink at the sky. Oh, what yeah, a of course you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's got bigger and bigger and bigger it's as well, hasn't it? It's 90 pounds now. It's 90 pounds. Yeah. Yeah. Are you going to go? He's uh, blown Damo's. <laughs> <laughs> that has got a ticket shock. So yeah. have you. Yeah. Yeah, I have. Yeah. You, what? That's, like a calf, <laughs> yeah. that's like a calf of fish, but twice as big, isn't it? Three yeah. times as big. Yeah, it is, yeah. A mega carp, that maybe mega one of the carp. best carp in the world. Well, it was. It, it got a bit tam of tam uh, damage, tam Dale. Tail damage. <laughs> Tail damage. <laughs> Did it? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's growing before, right, isn't it? Was well, it mid ninety? No. Did you say? That's 91, ridiculous, think, isn't it? One. How busy must that lake be? It is busy. Oh, my it's God. To, it's, hard to it's not a big lake. It's very no. deep. No. Comes out, doesn't it, as well? It gets caught from the edge. Yeah, we're talking too much about this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been a while since you've added to yeah. your collection. Damo well, has no yeah. sugar in his tea when you meet him <laughs> over there. <laughs> Presume you're gonna, you're, there's going to be some proof watching of this. Um, and, uh, editing. Yeah. 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 No, no, no. If this makes no, it edit, in, no editing whatsoever, it's going out as it but is. But Dan, you're about a year behind, so you won't know until then. <laughs> you forgot what we said anyway. You forgot, yeah. Well, um, um, I, I too, I, what I want to ask is what, what are people's favourites? You know, not just what we you guys have pulled out, but what have you guys thought were the, I the best cause ones? Because he's in the room, but Damo's first, I think it was the first one when you were talking about some of your European adventures and the way you tell a story, we're talking about good storytellers, but you grab you as fish, the story of going on, even though I've heard it, you told me how it happened. When you then listen to it back, like driving on a long journey, just proper got, anytime I hear someone tell a story and tell a story well, it just gives me such a buzz mm. to go and do, not, not emulate, I'm not gonna go and do that sort of fishing, but hearing someone catch something they've been trying to catch mm. when it comes off it, it just it makes me want to go fishing even more than i already do which some would think is not possible <laughs> <laughs> but when i'm when some I'm, when would I'm, think he's not allowed <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, no but when when i listened to them stories mate it was it was just next level Jeez. for me that's really, what we're here really to do good. isn't it ultimately as well because that that to generate that feeling yeah. in as many people as possible if they mm. if, I, i'm the same mate i'm absolutely the same if i hear something or read something it can just yeah. It sparks, it sparks that that ne that need to go. It, it's the need. That's the yeah. word. It's yeah. the need to go. I, I did write a small list um, of stuff that pre and post my time on this. Definitely the Stokes, the two before Frank, because he's someone we haven't talked. Absolutely one of a kind. Yeah, one. I mean, the, he's still the longest one, is it, Tobes? Nine days, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> You know what? He's still travelling back now. <laughs> <laughs> definitely Frank, definitely Stokesy yeah. from from the bit before me, and then since me, like since I've been doing it, um, uh, obviously Borley, which we, we mentioned, mm -hmm. um, Carl Smith, uh, just because it's so, it was, I, I believe him to he, him to be the most important, you know, young angler out there, um, and my mate Joe. It was just a great thing to sit opposite my, a good friend of mine, someone I've known since he was. A, practically a kid drunk and joe forrester yeah 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 uh, but drunk they, they, and joe forrester we we went on a garth's stag do mm. to benador many years ago right and drunk and joe forrester was born i'm just... fishing with him every week at the moment and it, it, i would never have put him and alcohol together at all he was not no, no, probably sober. but him and alcohol shouldn't be a thing yeah. oh really After, yeah, yeah. He, but he, he very much he yeah, was right. fantastic value <laughs> joe's great joe, joe is good value he's, he's, oh, right. he's yeah. good value okay. on a night out as joe yeah yeah, yeah. Loves a beer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not one I've listened to. I need to, because I see him at the lake. Yeah. I'm sort of, you almost, I don't know, it's a bit weird, isn't it? Listening to one from somebody that you see all the time, you know? Well, yeah. But, um, it was my I will. I yeah, will. For, for me, it was just because, I'm, you know, I, I'm not going to get that chance again where it's someone that I, you know, consider a, a mate yeah. beforehand. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, obviously I know a lot of carp anglers, but not someone that I've fished with a lot, you know? Yeah. Um, so that that was good. What what, what about you, Dan? What um, uh I really enjoyed the skiddy one. 
Yeah, good, no, good fit. Like, yeah, I like really that. enjoyed that. that. Well. Yeah. I, I'd like to fish on a lake that he was fishing. You know, I would. You but can he's still that... barrowing round a big lake without yeah. a power barrow. You no, know, he's got one. Days, now, has he? Yeah. Oh, he sorted it. But just that, just the real, the real characters of it. Like when, when he was talking about, I remember reading those articles when they went to Raysbury, and when he was talking in the podcast, that they didn't even know what they were landing on. No, just... They were car, could have been casting into where he didn't have a clue. No one could get bait out that far, and they had a throwing stick, and they were getting the ball. You know, you, you see them things, and you just think that they're operating at a completely different level to you, and it turns out they're not. They've just got the balls to go there mm. and do it. And that's, don't you think that happens? Like the same with Daryl. You know, he's just got the balls to go there. Yes, he's a fantastic angler, but when yeah. you hear about how he's caught something, it's no different to the fish to to the the thought process and the effort we put into every mm. time we go. Mm. But he's just got the balls to go there and do it. You know, we would all catch him out of Orion or that lake or whatever if you're prepared to put your balls yeah. on the it's line. It's the same power, it. isn't it, with, mm. with Daryl and his ability, but. Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, I, he's, a, he's an amazing everyone. angler, and I've so never met anyone who works a lake out faster than Daryl. Never. Yeah. You know, he's, he's amazing at that. But you've still got to put yourself in that situation and keep doing that. And I think that's what people like him do. Um, and and it shows that he's just a person. It can be done, can't it? Mm. So, but, but Skidmore's one, definitely. You'd have rubbed shoulders with him quite a lot, Dan, over the, on the early shows and all that, Skiddy, presumably. Not really, no. I used to say, I used to sort of, Say, I would do a wave to Bill and Skilly, yeah. but I was a bit scared of them to be honest. You know, they were the Nutribates boys, and I was just on my own with my own little tiny stand, you know. And they had this big, long yeah. sort of table full of all the all the essential oils and all that sort of thing. And obviously, I used main line, so sort of that you know, it was more rival, tribal than mate, the yeah, enemy, of, yeah, 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 not the enemy because it wasn't like that between them two brands, it wasn't like that. Um, no. yeah, but but um. But yeah, obviously I saw him around, you know. Um, but no, I, 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 of recent times, I really, I really enjoyed that one. Obviously, I enjoyed Scotty's one, um, but because again, because I know a lot of these people, it's I look at it in a different light. And and Skidmore, I didn't really, don't really know. Mm. So you know, it's that was a real good one, mm. you know. Um, I just feel like half half the time, Dan, you. We, you fall, <coughs> we, we fall woefully short of anything other than scratching the surface with these with these guys. Matt Skidmore could do twenty of them, and I think he needs to come back and just think right. What, where are we going to talk about yeah. this one, and not go off? You can't cover a bloke like that's entire no, angling life in three hours. Well, you, it's, it's an insult, isn't it, to try and get get? It, you just you know, <coughs> it, it is, needs Dan, to come back and do. More. It is, it is. But I think you know this goes out to a lot of people who aren't as kind of invested in carp fishing as, as perhaps we are. And I think it's nice to give them a, a wider like digest of someone to start with. There's got to be a selection, yeah. There's got to be an, maybe and, and yes, zero in an introduction it. into him. But I think the, the great thing about a podcast is that you can have ones that don't do massive numbers and it doesn't matter. It is, it's, it's, it's kept the, 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 the sort of the real fanatical carp anglers happy. And if, it, if we do just that every now and again, I don't think that's a problem. I really don't. Whereas with a film, you can't spend that amount of money on a film you need the and it only get yeah. twenty thousand views. Just can't. It's just it's just so unbalanced cost. I'd like to, to think you you guys were, were um you had the ratio just right now though with the films. Like you must know what with the film. Yeah, yeah we, we, it's going to work. We still make them and that uh, that uh, we, we spend a lot of money. I mean, look at that that Spanish trip. That was extremely expensive. That's two <laughs> weeks of a great big crew's time because yeah. they had a full set of crew each, not as expensive as as the jolly ups that these boys used to go on on a regular basis. The holidays that <laughs> they used to have on a regular basis, here, there, it's and everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but still a lot a lot of money, and and nothing happened. And you, you do, you know, you do have to take a chance every now and again. And I, I'd like to know, and I'd like to hear from the podcast sort of viewers. I'd like to put that show out where they don't catch anything. I totally, I think you should. We have I to. really, really I think, think we should put that out. And if I did a thinking tackle and I didn't catch anything, I'd like to put it out. You know, masterclass you can't because it's about. I've just had a failed masterclass at Gigantica, in the best swim on the lake, arguably at that time of the year. Absolutely horrendous weather. I didn't fish like a dickhead. I fished all right. Caught nothing. You know, and we yes, we've done some short films that we can refer back to previous captures because the tactics were sound 
there wasn't a bite on the whole lake for the whole week. Didn't do a bite for 17 days, which is unheard of for that lake in the winter time, you know. Um, but if I went somewhere and, and had a hard week and didn't catch anything for a thinking tackle, I, I'd like to show it, mm. you know. We, um, we always used to get it on the mag stand and we still do to a degree with, with the film work. People love it when they're blank. They want to see themselves occasionally reflected in in the reality that we're yeah. putting out there. Yeah, uh, it, it wounds us a bit when you're blank, but yeah. the people love to see that that we're not, you know, the, the lads aren't infallible. Yeah, um, and and perhaps you learn from the blanks as well. Yeah, you learn not to go there at that time of the year <laughs> <laughs> with a film. Or don't crew. Go, don't go when it's minus seven every night or whatever. Yeah. But um. Yeah. i tell you what, Dan, because we're probably going to start to look to wind this up. What would you like to see in the next, the next, not the next 100, maybe the next 50, next 25, what sort of thing? I'd like us to get some more really young anglers in, you know, uh, teenagers in their 20s who are bang into it, perhaps outside of our field of knowledge that we know through the grapevine of Terminators. Mm. Don't care whose bait they use or rigs they use or whatever, I don't care. I'd love to get them in. And I'd love to get some people back in that didn't give enough away. Jason Hayward, <laughs> top of my list. Like, none of this talking in riddles, Jason. Like, tell us half of what you've forgotten that you used 10 years ago, the thought mm. process behind and the things that worked. Give us something, some take home to put in our fishing, something to think about. Um, you know, amazing angler, amazing skill set and, and innovative thinker. Give us a little bit, mate. Come on, you know. I'd really like him to come back, mm. you know. Mm. Um, uh, Bill Cotton, love Lots to see, love his car polish, love stuff. to see Bill yeah, Cotton, yeah, here, you know, ripping it out of everything, us included, <laughs> you know, yeah, matching luggage and all that <laughs> business. Um, yeah, uh, so th- I think those two e- either ends of the spectrum yeah. that the, the new yeah. inspirational guys in carp angling and the old guard that are a little bit cynical mm. but are very knowledgeable as well. Mm. Mm. I'd like to see Lauren come on. Stand yeah. Up. Yeah. Well, I mean, she had a, an amazing year last year, doing it all for the right reasons. She's got time, bro. Carp. She's like just <laughs> yeah. globe hopping, isn't yeah. she? <laughs> Catching is. massive carp yeah, everywhere. That's what you should be doing at that yeah. age, isn't it? Yeah, it's great. Loving life. Yeah, fair play to her. Mm. Yeah, fair too play right. to her for yeah, designing her life in that way. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I think we should have more of this, like more more groups. Yeah. And and we've we've got such a good direct link to our, to to our customers and to the people that watch the podcast that we should ask them what they want us to talk about. You could do one of these every single month. We could sit down and do an you hour. You could do one every week, mate. Yeah, you could easily. And, 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 and if people just send in questions, you don't really know what you're talking about. You come in here, you have a... Damo doesn't want to do Damo, it. Damo's out. He's like, no, <laughs> Damo's out. Not every that week. Out. <laughs> no, but I mean, you could easily do one a month and you could sit down he and could. just... doesn't have to be the same three people. Oh, no, I, I, I always people. like listening to different perspectives from people and seeing them work something out whether they agree or not in the end it doesn't matter but i think that's the that's that's the joy of listening to long form mm, podcasts mm, mm, is yeah. is not really knowing what they're talking about and watching somebody figure something It'd be nice out. to have opposing opinions yeah. about stuff as well you know yeah i can remember being at the um what was the it was it the go fishing show at the nec yeah. was it yeah. called go it fishing was, yeah. i can remember going on a panel there with um uh, Julian Cundiff and um, it was when when obviously he was Nutribate and it was when Activate was taking over the world like that and, and we got a question from the crowd we're all sitting up on the panel and there's somebody said go remember Mike what, what if you could only use one bait for the rest of your angling career like that and I, I went you know he said Dan you first and and Julian went oh here we go like that because he's obviously they're so aggrieved that that you know ready rolled um uh uh, activate was absolutely smashing the world apart and i said activate like that you know um and then he, and then i said you can crumb it up you can use it big if there's bream you can use small hook baits you can you know you can spot it you can catapult it whatever you want to do it's so that's why i like it because it's so versatile like that and he went hemp and i was like mate how are you gonna how are you gonna get that 120 yards out or how are you gonna stop catching bream or tench or whatever and so a bit of that amongst this a bit of a bit of conflict and controversy i think's good yeah definitely. you know so a few people that are prepared to stand no, up and be not. counted <laughs> <laughs> what are oh, you talking yes. about oh yes it is <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, Dubby, I think you have just sort of asked the, asked the people. So people get into If you're yeah, watching yeah. this on YouTube, hit it up in the comments. Or, Definitely. You know, t tell us what you want. And yeah. if you've got us in, in the room again, what, what do you want us to discuss? Yeah, we'll do more questions, Hope, yeah? I think it's well, when there's questions as well. It's a nice pace on the podcast. Yeah, I think I think towards the end of this, you slow pace down a little bit because you're talking about stories and that sort mm -hmm. of thing. It's not one person talking, but when you've got a subject, it's like it's much quicker and pacey. I think mm -hmm. you people listen to. It I easier. think me and Damien should do one about the old days at the very beginning. Yeah, but you've got to let me talk about some of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can, mate. You can. Yeah, that would be good. That's just don't go to the, good. maybe go to the pub first. Yeah. Have a couple of Corona <laughs> yeah. fish and chips. Well, maybe we yeah. suggest have some beers in here. Well, we could, yeah. yeah. If you want. Beers on the pod. Oh, yeah. yeah, has to be on my cheat day, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a nice symmetry there, chaps. We started off talking about Dan's cheat days. We're going to finish talking about Jan Dan's cheat days. So here's to the next 100, hopefully. Absolutely. Yeah. Nice Absolutely, one, yeah. nice one, chaps. The Thinking Tackle Podcast.